What's up, world? Hey, I know I'm a little bit late. All right, don't be getting mad at me. All right, I'm only like five, 15, however many minutes late. Don't even matter. What's going on, everybody? Sorry if you guys hear my co host over there. You know, he stays screaming about something, yo. So, welcome. Today is Wednesday, 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 Wednesday. Uh, yeah. We're going to be going over NCLEX questions today. You guys know how we do. So we're going to give everybody a couple of minutes to kind of jump up in here. And then once everybody jumps up in here, we will uh, we will get it on and popping. We'll get it on and popping. We'll get it on and popping. Mm-hmm. Shout, out, shout out to Chris Brown. Shout out to Chris Brown. See what we got doing. What's up? I, oh, I think that's Anna. I don't even know who Anna is. And I do I remember you. I'm not sure. Anyways, welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome to the TikTok Live. Uh, we're gonna be doing NCLEX questions today. Um, and yeah, I'm just waiting for everybody to jump up in here. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Kevin. I go by the boot nurse, the the boot nurse uh, on all social media platforms. Make sure you guys check that out. Um, if you guys are new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. Once we start to get a good amount of people up in here, we're going to turn, we're going to turn this thing around and we're going to start answering NCLEX questions. Like I said, I want to know who you are, where you're from, what, where you are at in your nursing journey. And while you guys do that, I'm going to be updating some things. Um, just as a, a quick little update is I'm going to be doing a nursing school summit like webinar uh, hosted by True Learn and Picmonic. Um, I'm going to post that link. Oh, actually, that link is in my uh, is in my description. Click on the link tree, and it's the very first one that's up top. And we're going to be going over the new generation NCLEX, essentially everything that you need to know. So make sure you guys go over there, check that out on the link, and make sure you guys register. That's going to be on October 1st. All right? So like I said, hey, make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys share. Let everybody know that we're doing these questions because sharing is caring. Avery, what's up? What is up? It's funny. I just got off of another meeting and I was just talking about you. I was just like, yo, I do uh, I do TikTok lives on the regular, you know, and I go over nursing, nursing style questions or whatever. And I was like, we got I got I got some regulars. I was like, but there's one that pops in there all the time. And her name is Avery. And they're just like she comes in all the time. I'm like all the time. <laughs> like just like God, God is good all the time. That's right. Yes, he is. All right. So uh, welcome, Avery. Welcome. You never miss. You never miss. And I'm pretty sure if you do miss something, hey, you can go over there and check it out on YouTube. All right. You already know the deal. So shout out to all 80 of y'all that are up in here. Make sure you guys like. Make sure you guys share. That pushes the algorithm. That way, you know, y'all don't really got to stare at my face. Y'all are ready for the questions. But I want to get a good amount of people up in here before we start going through the questions. So I'll probably give it another couple of minutes while we start to push some traffic up in here. And um, like I said, I'm doing a nursing summit and it's going to be live via uh I don't know. I don't know exactly what the link is, but it's presented by Picmonic and um, True Learn, where I'm going to be talking about the new generation NCLEX. You already know how I feel about that. Y'all know that's my bread and butter. Y'all know, already know I ain't about the games when it comes to this NCLEX. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to be doing that live webinar, get an hour. So y'all know y'all get an hour over there. Y'all get an hour over here with me. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to do that. Uh, what's up, Thunder? Lightning and the thunder. Hey, I think we got a good amount of people here. Jess the mess. What's up? Hey, Kev. Uh, I can't stay. Wanted to wish you guys good luck. Uh, uh, what it says? Good studies. Good study sess. You mean, oh, like success. Why couldn't you just say success? Why you got to be difficult? Okay. But thanks. Appreciate you. Hey, so shout out to all 77 of y'all up in here. My name is Kevin. I go by the boot nurse. We're going to be going over nursing style questions. I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. Um, are you taking NCLEX? Are you a nurse? Are you a pre-nursing student? I want to know all of that stuff. All of that stuff. Oh, session? You know I'm slow. You know I'm slow. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're going to be going over that. So since we got a good amount of people over here, we're about to make it happen. So let's turn this thing around. And let's say user 85, I'm sorry that you failed your exam. But one thing I'm going to ask you, ma'am, is what are you going to do to fix it? All right. You got to really audit yourself as in like why specific things didn't work. All right. Uh, any advice, upcoming CNAs? Uh, I would most definitely stay in that book and I will most definitely check out some YouTube channels that are very, very helpful for CNAs. Uh, biggest thing for CNAs is, you know, what you can, can't do and the anatomy. Right. Those are some really big things that you need to know. Dr. Shelley and you world. 
you use doc. I don't even know who Dr. Shelley is. I definitely know what you are because I used it. All right. So, hey, here we go. Make sure you guys participate. Make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys share. I'm kind of sort of not really, but kind of sort of made me really funny. Um, the more that you like, more questions that you get, you get 25 questions. So I want all the likes. Uh, seven day NCLEX course. I created that NCLEX course. It's in this pre-launch phase. I failed my exam three times, y'all. So this is why I like to do these things is because I don't want anybody to ever feel how I felt. All right. I want you guys to be successful. I want you guys to be prepared. What's up, honey? Honey, what's up? Shout out to Florida. Shout out to Florida. Um, don't troll my chat. If you troll my chat, I'm going to ban you. And that's what a 600 means. And I don't gatekeep. I got these questions off nurselabs.com. OK, uh, any tips for learning pharmacology? You want to know the family name and the suffixes, right? That's what you want to know in regards to pharmacology. Uh, who is that? Coca Anastasia says, I'm a nurse travel recruiter. Mm -mm. No, ma'am. No, hey, shout out to you for being a recruiter, um, especially for travel nurses. I thought about doing travel nursing, but I don't want to do it no more. So here we go. Can y'all see that? Hey, give me a thumbs up if y'all can see that. I know that might be kind of big on my end, too. So let me shrink that down just a smidge. Shrink it down just a smidge. Did that look good? I think that look good. How'd that look? That look good? Y'all give me thumbs up. <clears throat> Y'all give me thumbs up. All right, Thunder, we good. All right, here we go. Nurse EJ is assigned to telephone triage. A client called who was stung by a honeybee and is asking for help. The client reports pain and localized swelling, but has no respiratory distress or other symptoms of anaphylactic shock. All right, so paint the picture for yourself. What is the anticipated initial? Initial meaning first. Right. What is the what is the uh, appropriate initial action that the nurse should direct the client to perform? Is it a remove the stinger by scraping it, applying cold compress, uh, taking oral antihistamines or calling 911? You're feeling you're feeling B uh, to die for Karina. C question mark. Venus says B. Brandy says B. Anna Cole says or is it Anna Nicole. I don't even know. Uh, user 85 says C an antihistamine. Y'all let her know what an antihistamine is. Hey, so I want you guys to conversate amongst you guys' selves uh, inside the chat as well, okay? Uh, it's That's Benadryl. Benadryl is an antihistamine. That That, that, that is correct. <laughs> What's, hey, what antihistamine is for allergies? Yes, it is. It helps with allergic reactions, right? It helps counteract that. I'm going to give you guys about another 20 seconds. Decreases inflammation. Yup, yup, yup. Hey, how, uh, user five zero. How you gonna ask me what the answer is? We giving people time to answer it. Hey, I give people. I give y'all specific time to answer. It. Hey, don't come up here and rush me either. You come up here and rush me, you're gonna get this finger in your face. Finger, finger. All right. Uh, it's gotta be C. Uh, C B. All right, here we go. In three, two. The answer is A. Hold on, let me see. All right, yo, so the answer is A, remove the stinger by scraping it. Since the stinger will continue to release venom into the skin, removing the stinger should be the first action that the nurse should uh, that the nurse should direct to clients. Within the first few minutes after the sting, the stinger should be removed via scraping with a credit card rather than swiping or rather than squeezing or tweezing to avoid uh, further venom exposure. Yes, way. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Some of these things... Some of these questions you may not like and some of the answers you may not like, and that's OK. This is why it's important that you read the rationale. Right. And you read why these answers are incorrect. I'm not going to read the incorrect ones. You guys can do that at your own leisure. But we always want to read this one. Right. OK. Scraping would be exactly. So that's why that's why you learn so much by reading the rationale. Right. You want to because you don't have you have no idea what would pop up a little bit later for you guys. OK. So here we go. Here goes question number two. Sorry if that's small. Also, hey, I need 10,000 people to follow me so I can stop being ghetto and not, and not stream like this. OK, so make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow. OK. Uh, scraping, antihistamine, cold compress. Yep. Uh, nurse Anna is an experienced travel nurse who has recently or who was recently employed and is assigned to the emergency unit. Uh, so whoever my travel nurse recruiter is, this is all for you. Um, in her first week of the job, which of the following areas is the most appropriate assignment for her? Is it triage, ambulatory section, is it trauma team, or psychiatric care? Amanda says A. Alicia says A. All right, says B. Bryce says A. Heather says A. Triage. Okay. Triage. We got some ambulatory sections. Okay. All right. So, hey, you got to remember, if you have somebody who is, who is an experienced travel nurse, but it's their first time being employed somewhere... You know, how would you treat them? How would you treat them? And that will determine on where you would put them. OK, 
Kevin ER Nurse says B. Shout out to you, Mr. ER Nurse. All right, I'll give you guys about another 20 seconds. All right. I appreciate all 176 of y'all up here and rocking with me. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Kevin. I go by the boot nurse. I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. We do these. We do these lives three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 5.30. 10 seconds, all right? 10 seconds. 10 seconds. All right, time's up. Here we go. <laughs> so the answer is B. Shout out to everybody that picked B. Appreciate all the follows. Uh, ambulatory section. The ambulatory section deals with clients uh, with relatively stable conditions. The decision of whether or not to delegate or assign is based upon the RN's judgment concerning the condition of the patient, the competence of all members of the nursing team, and the degree of supervision that will be required of the RN if a task is delegated. Shout out to you, First Lady. Um, shout out to you. Shout out to you. I'm always second guessing myself. Tamia. Hey, so I'm going to tell you all something right now. Once you guys come up with an answer, stick with it. Nine times out of 10, your first answer is your is the correct answer. So here's the thing I want to elaborate as well on the new generation NCLEX style questions. These type of questions, multiple choice, uh, select all that apply, all the ones that are on the old one, they're all the same. Like on the new generation NCLEX, they're on there as well. Oh, you're welcome. I, I'm, I pride myself on saying people's names right. But the NCLEX, the, the, the biggest thing that's changed about the NCLEX is the, uh, the additional delivery of the questions, such as the case studies, the multiple responses, the highlights, the closed questions, the fill in the blanks, stuff like that. So in this one specifically, this one's more of more uh, multiple choice and select uh, select all that apply. All right. Uh, I'm trying not to second guess. Uh, I will try. Hey, there, there is no there is no it's do or do not. There is no try. Name that movie. All right. Here we go. Uh, question number three. A client arrives at the emergency department who suffered multiple injuries from a head on car collision. Paint the picture. Somebody got into a car accident. Which of the following assessments should take the highest priority to take? Right. Is it unequal pupils, irregular pulse, uh, ecchymosis in the flank area, or is it a deviated trachea? Everybody's saying D. I saw some other things. Somebody says A. Okay. Uh, uh, what is it? Can he read? Can he read the question first? I did read the question first. What, did you, what is you talking about? Um, tension pneumothorax. Uh, okay. All right. We got D. I'm going to give you guys about another 30 seconds. I'm not in nursing school yet, but why was my instinct D? I don't know. You tell me why. Think ABCs. Definitely the trachea. Okay. Definitely the trachea. Shout out to all 200 and... 12 of y'all or 27 of y'all rocking up in here with us. We answering nursing style questions. I'm saying they answer before you started reading. Ah, I got you. I don't know because they read ahead of me. I'm slow. I don't know. So here we go. Here's our answer in three, two. And the answer is D. So everybody was thinking about airway, 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 right? A deviated trachea is a symptom of tension pneumothorax, right? Because now something's going on with one of my lungs. So my trachea is going to go to where the good lung is at because that's how it compensates. Um, which is a result of a respiratory distress if left untreated. The first question in the, e, uh, in the ESI triage algorithm for triage nurses asks whether the patient requires immediate life-saving interventions or simply, is the patient dying, right? So when you look at your priority questions, is my patient dying or are they going to die if I don't intervene with this patient first or this issue that's happening with them first? The nurse determines this by looking to see if the patient has a patent airway. If the patient is breathing, and does the patient have a pulse? Shout out to everybody uh, for the follow. Man, I love y'all. Man, y'all here being Gucci. New grad here. Shout out to you, Jada. Shout out to you, Jada. Shout out to you for what? Welcome to the shit show. I mean, welcome to being a nurse because it's 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 glorious. It's glorious, I tell you. It's glorious. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, somebody else had a question on here. I don't I don't know if I missed it, but I may I may go back to it. Not sure. Anyways, make sure you guys uh, make sure you guys. Hey, I got these questions off nurselabs.com. So make sure you guys take it. Take my NCLEX next month. Shout out to you, Stacy. Shout out to you. Uh, here we go. Question number four. Laugh out loud. I already know I'm a PCT in the ICU. Well, shout out to you. You Gucci out here then. You Gucci. Hey, but that role is real different when you start working as a nurse. Fourth semester. Love it. Love it. Love it. Is it bad I'm here for fun? Nah, we have, all we do is have fun up in here. That's what I'm talking about. Question number four, Nurse Kelly, a triage nurse, encountered a client who complained of mid-sternal chest pain, dizziness, and diaphoresis. So paint the picture. Which one of these is one of those that sticks out to you, right? Which of the following nursing actions should be or should take priority, right? 
Is it administer uh, oxygen therapy via nose uh, nasal cannula? Notify the physician. Complete a history uh, a history taking, or put the patient on a EKG monitoring or ECG whatever. You say chest pain. T uh, D uh, A or uh, least invasive is A. Okay, least invasive is A. I like where your head is at. I like where your head is at. All right, what else we got? What else we got? What else we got? Okay, we got D. We got D. Uh, I work cardiac, our, our cardiologist has an MA. Ah, ha, so you know the answer. You know the answer. All right, EKG, EKG. I'm going to give you guys about another 20 seconds. Another 20 seconds. And 20 seconds for y'all is probably about five seconds for me. So hurry up. Hurry up and answer the question. <laughs> uh, bro, hey, we got almost 800 people up in here listening to me run my mouth. Hey, I appreciate y'all. Hey, I appreciate y'all. Make sure you guys like, share, follow. The more people to see, the better. The more likes I get, the better. And, you know, more questions for y'all. Here we go. Answer in three, two, the answer is a the priority goal is to increase myocardial oxygenation place the patient on a cardiac monitor establish iv access give 162 to 325 milligrams of chewable aspirin um was that plavix uh you want to control pain and consider o2 therapy <laughs> diane said i was so wrong girl it's okay it's okay if you feel like it. so here's the thing you all this is how you should practice Right. You always want to go and you want to read the question. Always read the question. RTFQ. Who in here can tell Avery besides you? Who in here can tell me what RTFQ means? This is why it's important that you read the question. Think about those things that stick out, those really key words. And then you pick your answer. All right. And our answer was I want to give oxygenation. Right. I want to oxygenate my patient. That's the very first thing that I want to do. What takes priority? That is the priority thing. EKG doesn't matter if they're not breathing. Facts, <laughs> facts, 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 facts. Priority means no. Pri yeah. Priority means first. What is the very first thing that I'm going to do? All right. Here we go. Question number five. Appreciate everybody. Make sure you guys like, share, follow RTFQ. Avery, let them know what RTFQ means. Ar Ariel or is it Ariel? Ariel. She's asking. She asking out here. All right. So uh, question number five. A group of people arrive at the emergency unit. Uh, by a private car with complaints of periorbital swelling, cough, and tightness in the throat. There is a strong odor uh, essentially coming from their clothes. They report exposure to a gas bomb uh, that was set off in the house. Which is the priority action? Which, what is the priority action? Uh, you want to instruct personnel to don um, uh, what is the personal protective equipment. Direct the clients uh, to the cold or clean zone for immediate treatment. Immediately remove other clients and visitors from the area. You want to measure vital signs and auscultate lung sounds. Or you want to direct the client to the decontamination area. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? So when I think of something like this, I think of something as in like, hey, you know, they had a gas. There was a gas bomb that went off that was set in somebody's house. So this is like a bioterrorism type deal. So now... Remember, it's all about safety, all about safety, safety, safety of our patients and, and essentially safety of you as the um, uh, as the person that's taking care of them. OK, so what is the priority action? This is how you got to think. You got to think outside the box. You got to protect you. Facts, because if you if they ain't know you, who you about to take care of? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Shout out to all the follows. Appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all keep smashing that like button. Hey, I'm just saying I had like 50,000 likes, you know, not too long ago. Uh, I kind of want to get back up to that because, you know, the more that you like it, you know, the more that they push it. So I'm gonna give you all 10 more seconds. Rika says, A. nobody answered my question about what RTFQ was. I'm a little mad right now. Here we go. So the answer is E. We want to direct clients to the decontamination area. Decontamination in a, spe in a specified area is the priority. The decontamination and support areas are established within the warm zone, also referred to as the contamination reduction zone. Decontamination involves thorough washing to remove contaminants because you don't want to have all the contaminants inside of your emergency room or your hospital because you have other sick people. So, like, say you had five people that got sick. Now they're inadvertently about to get hundreds of people sick. And that's what we don't. And that's what we don't want. OK, so I think we got that. Y'all are answering so many questions. Y'all are answering all the questions. I, I don't even know if somebody answered my question about RTFQ. It don't even matter. Can I get a copy of this doc, though? Ma'am, you can go to nurselabs.com and you can find these You can find these questions. Uh, read the fucking question. Yeah, Ma'am, you already know what the deal is. That's exactly what it stands for. Read the question. 
Kevin, I did answer your um, Avery. I'm sorry. People are answering all these questions. You know what I'm saying? And I can't I can't get to them. Hey, so we're gonna take a quick little interlude. So if you gotta go use the bathroom, do something, go do something, you know what I mean? So hey, we're doing NCLEX questions. I appreciate y'all. Shout out to all 500 plus y'all better in here rocking with me. Make sure you guys participate, right? Because I'm kind of sort of funny, but not really. Maybe. Who knows? Um, the more that you like, the more questions that you get. Hey, I got a few in the chamber right now. Boop, boop. I mean, I got a f- <laughs> I got a few questions that we can go over. Oh my god. Hey, so make sure you guys make sure you guys participate, all right? Um, seven day NCLEX course. I created an NCLEX course because I failed my NCLEX three times and I do these questions is because I wish I would have utilized social media properly. Um, which is why I do these questions. I do these guys. I do them for y'all because I love the interaction. I love the question that you guys ask. And I know that at some point it's going to be super helpful. Do I go over HESI? No, I hate HESI. I had to take it. It's terrible. Steven, uh, Navy corpsman, paramedic, a nursing student here, fellow doc. Shout out to you, Steven. Shout out to you. Took that NCLEX today. Got that good pop-up 85 questions. Shan, that's what I'm talking about. Everybody give Shan her flowers. Tell her that you love her. Tell her welcome to the shit show because that's what we about. Ma'am, welcome to be, welcome to nursing. Welcome to it. Um, if you troll my chat, I'm going to ban you. That's what a 600 means. Um, and also, if I don't see it, you guys, we can do it on a democracy. We can we can ban them together. You know, we can ban together to ban them. Uh, also, I don't gatekeep. I got these questions off nurselabs.com. They have everything from nursing questions there to Nanda's and all that good stuff. Um, is ATI a good study thing? Debbie, I don't like ATI at all. Everybody else that doesn't, they most people don't like it, but, you know, to each their own. How often do you do these? I do these every uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 5.30. Yay, uh, I made another love. What do you mean you made another love? You talking about me, girl? Hey, look, 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 look. There we go. There we go. All right, here we go. Question number six. When an unexpected death occurs in the emergency department, which task is the most appropriate to delegate to a nursing assistant? Is it A, assisting with postmortem care? Is it B, facilitating meetings between the family and the organ, the organ donor specialist? Is it C, uh, escorting the family to a place of privacy? Or is it D, help the family to collect belongings? We got A's, we got D's. Khadijah, girl, I see you up in here answering. I see you. Think unlicensed personnel. That's exactly who they are. Nursing assistants are UAPs. Unis- uh, what is it? Unlicensed assistive personnel. That's exactly what they are. That's exactly how you'll see them labeled on the NCLEX. Doesn't make them less important. That is exactly who they are. They don't have a license. Okay. So shout out to y'all. Shout out to all 700 plus y'all up in here. Rock with me. Appreciate the shares, the loves, the follows. My name is Kevin. I go by the boot nurse. I want to know who you are where you're from and where you're at in your nursing journey. I don't care if you're prereqs. I don't care if you've been a nurse for 40 years. I want to know, let everybody else know so we can, you know, we can chat it up in here, baby. I'm gonna give y'all 10 more seconds. No, I'm not. Here we go. (laughs) The answer is you want to assist with postmortem care. Postmortem care requires some turning, cleaning, lifting, and so on. And the nursing assistant is able to assist with these duties. Uh, The use of a NAP's uh, increasingly demands registered nurses to delegate patient care tasks according to the principles of the ANA. These principles define nursing delegation as the transfer of responsibility for the performance of an activity for one individual to another while retaining accountability for the outcome. So if I give you responsibility as a nurse and you're the UAP or the nursing assistant and you don't do it, that's that ass. And by that ass, I mean mine. And if my ass is getting token, look, let me tell you something right now. First of all, pause, because, you know, that stuff like that don't happen. But I'm just saying, you mess up, I'm coming for you. And that's and that's, and that's just exactly how it goes. Aaron says, Aaron collects in two weeks. Ma'am, you about to be Gucci out here. You're going to do just fine. Appreciate all the likes, shares, and follows. Y'all are Gucci out here. All right. So, hey, this is what the UAP can do, right? You can assist in postmortem care. They're not doing it by themselves, right? They're doing it with the nurse. Haven't started yet. That's okay. That's okay. Respiratory therapists here just creeping and learning. Not, ma- ma'am, you ain't got to creep. You can come up in here. You can come up here and let us know. Jen says she take her NCLEX tomorrow. Shout out. Hey, if, hey, first of all, Jen, if you're doing your NCLEX tomorrow, get off. Get off. Get off this live and go and go relax. Get off this live and go relax. If you don't know it by now, you don't know it at all. You are doing okay. Trust and believe me. Hey, have you looked into anyone's CPR before? I don't even know what that means. Like CPR classes, which me. Here we go. Question number seven. Uh, the physician has ordered uh, cooling measures for a cl- uh, for a child with a fever who is likely to be discharged when the temperature comes down. Which task would be appropriate to delegate to the nursing assistant? Prepare and administer tepid uh, sponge bath. Explain 
the need for giving cool fluids, assist the child in removing outer clothing, or advise the patient, or I'm sorry, advise the parent to use acetaminophen instead of aspirin. I'm in Georgia. I'm about to take my NCLEX. When you take your NCLEX, if you're taking it tomorrow, you better get off this live and go relax. Anybody taking their NCLEX tomorrow needs to go. Go away. And I don't say, hey, I ain't saying that in a rude way. I'm just saying you need to keep your mind, you need to keep that mind clear. All right. Keep it clear, because if you don't know it by now, you don't know it at all. I believe in every single person that's going to take that exam is going to crush that shit. And I expect every one of y'all to come back up in here on Friday or on Monday to be like, Kevin, I passed. Oh, my God, I'm a nurse. Yes. All right, I'm done. <laughs> I'm going to give you all 10 more seconds uh, and go watch Mark Clement. I love Mark Clement. He was, he was great. He's great for me. Here we go. And the answer is C, assist the child in removing outer clothing. The nurse assistant can help with the removal of outer clothing, which allows the heat to dissipate from the child's skin. The client uh, is is the center of care. The need of the client must be uh, competently met with the knowledge, skills and ability of the staff to meet their needs. Uh, in other words, the nurse who delegates aspects of care uh, to other members of the nursing team must balance the needs of the client with the ability of those to which the nurse is delegating tasks and aspects of care, among other things, such as the scope of practice and the policies and procedures within the particular healthcare facility. I know that was a mouthful. Using Archer. Thoughts? Archer's great, Shan. Archer is great. Hey, that's another thing, too, is that I don't shit on other reviews that are out here because I personally have used a bunch of them. Uh, but the one thing I will tell you is that if there is a shitty review out there, I won't even tell you about it because it's a shitty review. So why would I tell you about it? <laughs> You know what I mean? So a PA student here and I used to be a CNA. Shout out to you, Alyssa. Is it Alyssa? Alyssa? Alyssa. I'm just going to call you Alyssa. Um, here we go. Question number eight. Uh, you are preparing a child for IV conscious sedation before the repair of a facial laceration. What important information? I'm sorry. What important? What information should you report immediately to the physician? So this is what we call a showstopper. What do I need to tell them before we do anything? Right. The child suddenly uh, pulls out the IV. Uh, the parent is not sure regarding regarding uh, the child's tinnitus or yeah, or I'm sorry, tetanus uh, immunization status. The parent wants information about the IV conscious sedation. The patient, the parent, ref the parent's refusal of the administration of the IV sedation. Everybody's saying D. Archer is very similar to the exam. I use both Archer and UWorld, and I would recommend Archer. I use both UWorld and Archer as well, and I, I, I wish I knew about Archer when I took my exam. I used UWorld twice, and I wish I could have saved my money because... Anyways, <laughs> but, hey, you know, UWorld works. It statistically showed that it worked. Uh, D for shizzle. Okay. Is shizzle on there? Heather says C. Okay. I'm going to give you all about 10 more seconds. 10 more seconds. 10 more seconds. Shout out to all 514 of y'all up in here rocking. Is Kaplan good? I love Kaplan. I use Kaplan. I actually made a Kaplan review. It's on my YouTube channel. If you guys don't know, I made a YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. Go check my link out in my bio. It has all of my stuff there. Make sure you guys go check it out. Uh, hey, keep smashing that like button and sharing too. Uh, I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm quitting my job. Heather, you might as well just quit that job. I'm just playing. The answer is D. Yep, Heather, just go ahead and quit. Go ahead and quit right now. Go ahead and put that two weeks in. But but have it dated um, for two weeks ago and just quit tomorrow. <laughs> oh, so the answer is D, the, pa the parent's refusal of the administration of the IV sedation. The refusal of the parent is, abs is an absolute contradiction. Therefore, the physician must be notified. But the uh, anatomy, I'm sorry, the autonomy of parents is very obvious or obviously different from the autonomy of the of patients to make decisions for themselves. Lord of mercy. Uh, while adults, while adult patients are generally thought to have an absolute right to refuse medical treatment for themselves, we don't usually think that parents can refuse all medical treatment for their children. And that is very, very true. You'll have some patients that'll just be like, no, I don't want my kid to have that. And I was like, yeah, but it's a life saving, it's a life saving, you know, medication or a life saving, you know, intervention that we need to do. And at that point, I have literally seen in real life where doctors have gotten court orders from judges that override their pay, their their parents, um, their parents, you know, decisions to save their child. It'd be fucking wild out here. It'd be wild. I love you where the rationales were thorough and easy to understand. I didn't like that because that's all they gave. I needed more than just, you know, rationales. I needed like content. You know, I needed somebody to help me break it down and I loved you world. I mean, I'm sorry. I loved Kaplan and I loved uh, Kaplan and Mark Clemick. And those were the two that worked for me. 
uh, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. <laughs> the choice is yours. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot. Uh, I put this uh, in a consent environment, correct? Yeah, uh, but it's very rare. It is very rare, but it does happen. It, it's very rare, but it does happen. Mark uh, Mark K. and Archer is what I use. Shout out to you, Heather. Heather, you quitting that job or what? I'm just asking. Anyways, um, <laughs> question number nine. The emergency medical services has uh, transported a client with severe chest pain. As the client is being transferred to the emergency stretcher, you note unresponsiveness, cessation of breathing, which means they stop breathing, and unpalpable pulses. Which of the following tasks is appropriate to delegate to the nursing assistant? Uh, assists with the intubation, uh, placing the defibrillator pads, doing chest compressions, or initiating bag valve mask ventilation. We got C's. We got D's. Hey, so give me an answer. Somebody said somebody said D or C. Hey, it's you got to let me know. You got to let me know what's going on out here. Appreciate all four hundred y'all rocking, uh, breaking that sternum. Look, let me tell you something. Anybody, if y'all ain't never done CPR before on a real patient, you'll never forget it the first time you ever do it. Somebody said A. Hold on. I mean, let, me, let me go. It says A is the only thing uh, they can do, assist. Hmm. Okay. I, li I, li I like your thought process on that. Well, we're going to answer that here in a second. Uh, could they do D after the nurse? What? Nursing assistants like CNA? Yeah, like CNAs. CNAs, medical techs, anybody that doesn't have a license. So not the LPN and not the RN. Uh, get the uh, get that cardio and start Heather. All right, I'm gonna give you all 10 seconds. Paige says can't intubate. Compressions are most important. Hey, you got to get that circulatory system moving, baby. You got to get it moving. Dropping out of nursing school. Uh, wait, what? Drop uh, dropped out of nursing school my last semester and think about going back. Hey, look, either you're going to go back or you're not. So uh, uh, no, every medical professional is co-certified. Mm. I'm a CNA and I have to do all but a look. Look at you. Here we go. What's the answer? The answer is C. So the key word it says, which is the following task is appropriate for them to do at this moment for a patient who is unresponsive. Stop breathing and an unpalpable pulse. Better get them chest compressions going. You better get them going. Performing chest compressions are within the training of a nursing assistant or CNA or UAP, whatever you want to call them. every good certified Nursing assistant should be proficient in cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Basic life support certification is the widely used term for any form of CPR certification and is required for all registered nurses and certified nursing assistants. Right. Uh, do you really break ribs? Yes. Yes. Son of son of a beach. Uh, you will certainly be breaking them ribs. Trust me. Believe me. You're going to be like, what the fuck is that under my oh, my God, their chest is collapsing. Right. That's what that's what I'm saying. This is a freebie for sure. It definitely is a freebie. It definitely is a freebie. Nursing assistant is the key is the key wording. Exactly. So what can I give to somebody who is not licensed to do all of those things? Right. CNA and currently the second semester. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Here we go. Hey, I appreciate all the love. Appreciate all the, all the likes and the follows. Make sure you guys keep sharing. Make sure you smash that like button. Let everybody know. Why wouldn't it be D? Let's let's see. No, the answer was, hold on. So, oh, so I'll ask you why. So the use of a bag valve mask requires practice and usually a respiratory therapist will perform this function. So you got to think, this patient is coding. This is a code blue, unresponsive, not breathing, no pulse. This is a code blue. Everybody has their job. Everybody has their responsibility, right? Who's going to innovate? It's not going to be the CNA. They're not going to assist with that. The respiratory is going to assist with that. Who's going to place the defibrillator? Nine times out of ten, it's going to be the nurse. Who's going to bag? Nine times out of ten, it's going to be respiratory, or it could be the RN if respiratory therapy is not there. Okay. Uh, what does it say? Uh, it's unresponsive. You need to do C. Remember, you got to do. You have to do what is within your scope of practice. And if I'm delegating to a UAP or a nursing assistant, they can't do those things. They can't assist with intubation. They can't do nothing like that. Okay. Remember, it's on a national standard of what you can and can't do. All right, here we go. Question number 10. The nurse manager decides to form a committee to address the issues of violence against ED personnel. I wonder if Kevin E.R. is still up in here. I kind of want his take. Which combination of employees would be best suited to fulfill this assignment? Is it a, uh, an ED physician and charge nurses, uh, RNs, LPNs and nursing assistants, experienced RNs and experienced paramedics? Uh, at least one representative from each group of the emergency department. What are we thinking? Christina says D. 
Uh, shout out to, is it Kevin Wynn? Shout out, thanks, sir, for the follow. Thank you for the follow. We got D's, D's, D's. Okay. Avery says D. Hey, I just want to let y'all know, Avery has answered. So I already know the answer is right. And her word is, her word is doctrine. So I'm just saying that those aren't, those aren't my words. Those are hers. She said that to me one day. What are you thinking? I'm gonna give y'all about 20 more seconds. D each one. Appreciate the follows. Thanks for the follow. Kevin says D. Okay. Oh, whatever. Hey, you know, I'm just playing, girl. You know, I'm just playing. All right. Here, all right. Here we go. Answers in three, two. And the answer, of course, is D. Uh, at least one representative from each group of the uh, of emergency department personnel should be included because all employees are potential targets for violence in the emergency department. The uh, diversity of the group should also be considered and assure that each department or each employee is represented. You know, there's a lot of shit that happens in the emergency department. Uh, is this practice for NCLEX? Yes. As well as for nursing students that are in school right now. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that happens in the emergency department, y'all. Uh, there's, a, you know, shootings happen. Nurses get stabbed, all kinds of stuff. So if you ever work in the emergency department or any department and they have these things, you guys definitely need to be a part of them. Because I'm telling you right now, don't nobody give a fuck about y'all. You have to you have to advocate and take care of yourself. I took my NCLEX 10 years ago. Not sure uh, how it is now. Uh, it's... Mm, Still relatively the same. Content is still relatively the same. It's just the delivery of how the questions are delivered now and how they're graded. All right. So shout out to y'all. Shout out to y'all. Yo, we're on a break. I know that looks kind of fuzzy. I'm sorry. Hey, if you guys are new here, my name is also Kevin. Uh, I go by the boot nurse on all social media platforms. Make sure you guys check out my link in my bio and my link tree. Have a YouTube channel. All these all these questions and stuff that I do, they end up on my YouTube channel. Um, so in case you miss it or anybody else miss it, that's exactly where they can go. Make sure you guys participate. I love the participation. I love how everything happens up in here. I love how you guys conversate with one another. Love it, love it, love it. The more you participate, hey, the more more questions you get, more likes you, the more likes and shares you do, the more questions that you get. Got 25 total, maybe. <laughs> I got a bunch in the chamber. You know what I'm saying? Got a bunch of questions in the chamber. Um, <laughs> but uh, I want all the likes. I want all of them. Not some of them, not a few of them. I want all of them. All of them. Um, don't troll my chat. You troll my chat, I'm going to ban you. And a ban is a 600, which is 600 seconds, which equals 10 minutes. And I don't ban you for 10 minutes. I ban you forever because I don't I, I do not do well with stupid people. So um, you be stupid, uh, I'm going to ban that ass. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, I created an NCLEX course called the 7-Day NCLEX course. I did that because I failed my NCLEX, y'all. I failed it three times. I failed it three times. Any review that you could pretty much think of, I have used. OK, I have used it. And so I decided that I wanted to make a review to make it, you know, to make it all encompassing and better for people to understand, of course, and to make it a little bit more affordable. Right. So right now it's going for forty eight dollars. You Once you get it for forty eight dollars, you have it for a lifetime. So every update that I'm dropping in there, you're going to get um, that'll change. But it's not changing now. And I'll let you know when that happens. So make sure you guys go over there and check that out. Also, I don't gatekeep. I got these questions off nurses dot com. So I know a lot of people are asking. That's where I got them. Also, if you guys go to my link tree, I will be doing a nursing school summit on October 1st. And there's a registration link in there if you guys are interested in uh, coming to that live summit because uh, we're going to be going over the new generation NCLEX. OK, so if anybody's interested in that, make sure you guys go over there, click the link tree uh, and then look at all that Gucci ass stuff that I got going on over there. All right. And I'm going to answer some of you. Uh, what do you get for forty eight dollars? You get right now you're getting um, content and we are currently in production is uh, the NCLEX course or I'm sorry, the NCLEX review that's broken down by eight by the eight sections of the NCLEX pie to include a uh, new generation NCLEX uh, videos. What I like to call um, the path to conquering the NCLEX. Uh, do you have any experience in the next gen NCLEX? Yes, I've actually I actually took three new gen NCLEX practice exams. And I mean, I I passed. <laughs> I passed. I took my NCLEX in 2020. So I've been a nurse for three and a half years. I graduated nursing school in 2018. So, you know, I do NCLEX stuff all the time. Any tips for prioritization? Unstable or stable versus unstable, acute versus chronic. You need to know who like who you need to see first. All right, here we go. Question number 11. I know somebody else had to ask some questions in there. Sorry if I missed them. Manasa, I appreciate you answering them. Manasa is my co-host, y'all. She is a, another moderator. She's actually one person that I have helped coach, and she passed her NCLEX on her seventh attempt. And I'm just letting y'all know, she's a she's a ball-ass nurse out here. Nobody else would ever know that she did anything like that or went through any struggle like that unless we openly talked about it. And we're all about being open here. So I'm just letting y'all know. 
Are you working as a nurse now? Uh, your content. I do work as a nurse. I work as an operating room nurse. I have um, experience. I have a year in the ICU, uh, a few months in the PACU, and then a little bit over a year. Uh, or the rest of my time has been in the operating room as an OR nurse. So question number 11, a client suffered an amputation of the first and second digit in a chainsaw accident. Which task should be delegated to the LPN slash LVN? Is it A, cleansing the amputated digit and placing them directly into a ice slurry, wrapping the cleansed digits in saline moist gauze, sealing um, in a plastic, with a plastic container and Placing in ice water, gently cleanse the amputated digit and the hand with uh, uh, iodine or cleansing the digit with sterile normal sterile normal saline and placing it in a sterile cup with sterile normal saline. We got bees. We got bees. We got bees. We got bees. Uh, that was my dad. He had a permanent shocker. Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy. Dad got a permanent shocker. No, you did not. <laughs> I took my NCLEX three times. But I ain't even going to deal with stupid people also graduated in 2020. That's what I'm talking about. I don't do I don't I don't do well. I don't do well with stupid people. I keep it all the way real. I'm not a nurse, though. What's that mean? What's that mean, Jen? We got D. We got B. I'm gonna give you guys another 20 seconds. Give you guys another 20 seconds. Appreciate everybody rocking in here with me. Make sure you guys like, share, follow. I took my NCLEX five times. OK, uh, BTS, you took it five times. So I'm going to ask you, you took it five times. Uh, what do you need to fix? Uh, I'm an H. Uh, I'm HM and had to control bleeding uh, and get into the ER. Look, hey, being an HM, hey, being an HM got you far, right? Here we go. Here's the answer. Uh, so it says once a finger amputation has occurred, ischemic tolerance uh, tolerance times are 12 hours if warm and up to 24 hours if cold. Uh, for more uh, proximal amputations, these times are half. The amputated part should be covered in a normal saline soaked gauze seal in a plastic bag and submerged in icy water with no direct contact with the ice. If there is direct contact to the ice, this could result in tissue damage and render the amputated part non-viable. Uh, can you go back to the question, please? Stacy? no, I'm not going back to the question. You should have been here. No, I'm just playing. Here you go. There you go. Uh, can, you, yeah, can you go back to the question? I'm trying to catch up on some of y'all's questions. Says B, uh, anyone know how many times you can take the NCLEX? Is that, uh, is it Sufjin? Is it Sufjin? I don't want to mess your name up. It honestly just depends on what state you're in. Some places, some states only let you take it three times. In Texas, you can take it as many times as you want within a four-year period. I think states like Ohio or something like that, you can take them unlimited times. Um, New York, I think you can take it unlimited times as well, so... Uh, the question is asking, what is the best way to initiate to initially treat an amputation? Correct. RTFQ, y'all. RTFQ. What does it mean? Somebody tell me. Avery, you still here? Let them know. Avery, Avery's about to be my other co-host. Yeah. See, New York is unlimited. Archer, you world Kaplan, which one do you suggest? Uh, I, it all just depends on you and how you learn. Uh, Archer's good. You world is I, I, don't, I can't really shit on you world. You world didn't really work for me, but I, I liked Kaplan and I think Archer's great. So it all just depends on you. Uh, read, read the effing question, y'all. Let them know. Let them know. Effing starts with an E, but she, y'all know what I mean. Um, a client arrives in the emergency unit and reports that a concentrated household cleaner was splashed in both eyes. Which of the following nursing actions is priority? What is the very first thing that I do? Examine the client's visual acuity. I I'll put an eye patch on there. Uh, use uh, uh, eye drops in the eyes or flush them immediately with normal saline. Kaplan fan. Hey, I made a whole review on Kaplan. That's how much I actually like them. Kaplan's a little bit on the premium expensive side, but hey, sometimes there is no sometimes. You always have to invest in yourself. Clean with NS. Clean with NS. I'm going to give you all about another 20 seconds. Shout out to all 411 of y'all up in here. Make sure you guys keep smashing that like button. The more likes I get, the more questions y'all get. <clears throat> I'm just saying a thousand likes a question should not be difficult. Y'all, You know what I'm saying? Carolina, thank you for the follow. Uh, answer the last question, please. Not going back. Not going back. Because if I go back, somebody's going to yell at me and then they're going to yell at you. And I don't want them yelling at you. You seem like a very nice individual and I don't need people. Kaplan's part of your tuition. Hey, I would utilize that then. I would definitely utilize that. So here's our answer. D, flush the eyes repeatedly using sterile normal saline. Initial emergency action during a chemical splash to the eye includes immediate continuous irrigation of the affected eye with normal saline. Immediately, immediate uh, irrigation with copious amounts 
of an isotonic solution uh, uh, is described previously uh, is the mainstay of treatment for chemical burns. Never use any substance that neutralizes uh, chemical exposure uh, as the exothermic reaction could lead to secondary thermal injuries. And that's true. I've seen that happen before. They were like, oh, I put water on it. I was like, yeah, but now you just enhanced it. And now you got now your skin's peeling. I used to uh, my first ever experience working as a nurse was I worked in uh, a burn ICU. And let me tell you, you learn a lot about burns and you learn a lot about wound care, a lot about burns. Always is flush. Remember. So what's the key word? The key word is they splash some. We'll just say they splash like Windex in their eyes or bleach or or, or Drano. What is the very what is, what is the priority? What is the very first thing I want to do? I want that shit out of my eyeball. Get it out. What school did you go to? Uh, what school did I go to? Hell, I don't know. I already forgot. Uh, Texas A&M. That's where I went. Texas A&M. Um, yeah. So you want the very first thing is that you want to get that stuff out of your eye. That's exactly what you want to do all the time. You don't want to stay. You don't. It ain't going to hold up residence in your eyeball. OK, we ain't trying to do all that. It don't need to be there. So it ain't going to be there. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Question number five or five. Oh, my God. Question number 13. A five year old client was admitted to the emergency unit due to the ingestion of an unknown amount of chewable vitamins for children at an unknown time. This is why we never tell kids at all that medicine of any type is candy. Upon assessment, the child is alert with no symptoms. Uh, Which of the following Information should be reported to the physician immediately, which means do not pass go. I need to let them know what the hell is going on with this patient. Okay, the child was nauseated and vomited once at home. The child was treated several times for toxic substance ingestion. The vitamin was the vitamin that was ingested contains iron or iron um, (laughs) or D. The child has been treated multiple times for injuries caused by accidents. C just seems right. A C C ma'am, sir. Or whoever you are, whatever you identify as. Um, If that's the right answer, then that's the right answer. But what are the key word? What are the key words that stick out to you inside of this question? Once you can figure out the key words, usually you're going to do a process of elimination at that point. You know, iron and just is bad news. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm going to give you all another. Yeah. Immediately is the big word. Any tips for health promotions? And Matt B. What is Matt B? Maternal, maternal, maternal newborn. I'm guessing that's what you mean. We haven't even gotten into that. So too much iron can cause constipation. Damn right it can. Uh, how long until we get the answer? I literally just finished reading it. There we go. Answer is C. Like you said, too much iron is a bad thing. So iron is a toxic substance that can lead to massive hemorrhage, shock, coma, and kidney failure. Iron poisoning is one of the most common toxic ingestion and one of the most deadly among children. This is why you never tell the damn children that Flintstone vitamins are fucking handy, right? Failure to diagnose and treat iron poisoning uh, can have severe consequences, including multi-organ failure and death. Um, I a lot, a lot worse than people think it is. It is very much a lot worse than people think. It is very, very, very bad. Um. So make sure that's why I said it's very important. You don't ever tell kids that any type of medication is candy. Right. I have a I have an 18 month old and he picks up every fucking thing off the floor thinking it's candy. And I'm just like, bro, what are you doing? Stop it. Let me bring this up some. All right. I think everybody can see that. All right. Here we go. Question number 14. Appreciate all 460. Y'all rocking. Uh, Now I'm scared to take the NCLEX. Don't be scared. Hey, If you're scared, go to church, Erica. Don't be scared of it. This is why you have to prepare for it, right? This is what I love about it. You're going to be all right, though. Don't don't be scared of the NCLEX, though. You want to know why? It ain't scared of you because it's definitely going to give you that work. So why don't you prepare and give, give it the work back? The following clients come to the emergency department complaining of acute abdominal pain. Prioritize them for care in the order of the severity of the condition. So what is the number? Who is the number one person I need to see all the way down to the least person I need to see? So you have to put them in order. I don't I can't I can't just have I can't just have one answer. Y'all are saying D. I'm assuming I'm assuming D is the first one. <laughs> I'm assuming that. Right. So I'm going to give you guys. Uh, Jacob says D C B A E. Question mark. Possibly. Very much possible. Right. So think about the. Le- so remember, think about your level of consciousness. Think about your ABCs. Who's going to die first? 
Who's going to die if you don't take care of them? Wish they did this uh, for NREMT because, boy, was that hard. you right. I was a, I actually was an NAEMT instructor for TCCC and uh, PHTLS for a long time. And uh, let me tell you, some of them, them tests be hard in the mobile. They be hard. C for first. C for first. Okay. C for first. All right, let's, let, let's think about this. So C says 27-year-old woman complaining of lightheadedness and severe sharp uh, lower abdominal pain who reports uh, she is possibly pregnant. Mm. Remember, we want the so we want the highest priority to the lowest priority, right? I'm going to give you guys another 30 seconds. I know this is a hard one. D-C-B-A-E, D, sudden onset. D is a, uh, a 59-year-old male pulsating abdominal mass. Uh, sudden onset of uh, persistent abdominal and back pain, tearing sensation. Hey, so everybody's saying D. What is D? Somebody tell me what D is. As soon as I see the answer for D, I'm going to give you all the answer. Like, I want to know, since everybody's saying D, a rupture, AAA, look, look, that's what I'm talking about. Here we go. Hold on a second. That ain't right. I don't know why that, that's not, so it's not, it's D-A, it's D-A, not A-D, it's D-A. So, so everybody that said D-A, B-C-E, that, that's correct. It's D-A, that's why I had to look at it like, what? It's D-A, so it is, the is the abdominal aortic uh, aneurysm that is the very first one that, that you want to take care of. Hey, because, hey, an abdominal aorta, how big is, how big is that pipe? It's huge. And how long, do you, how long does it take for you to, to bleed out? Yes, I, that's what I that's what I just said. How long is it? How long did it take for y'all to bleed out? It doesn't take long, especially from big pipe um, from uh, a seconds. Right. And I talk about tearing. It starts to get a, a really big belly, having all this back pain. It's rigid and it's sudden and it's onset happens within the past hour. You look, I'm just saying, OK, so this is one of those tough ones because you have to put it in order. But I can tell you right now on NCLEX. When it comes to prioritizing and putting things in order, you probably wouldn't get any more than like three of these. The majority of them are going to be like multiple choice, uh, select all that apply, and then you'll get 18 questions uh, from case studies. And by that, you'll get like six questions per case study, if that makes sense. It's not, Avery, it's not. It's not It's not correct. So it was it was uh, D-A-B-C-E. That's what it is. Not A-B or not A-D. So yes, you were correct. All right. So appreciate everybody. Uh, working through that one. We gotta gotta QC some stuff a little bit better, but that's okay. Um, shout out to all 300 plus of y'all that are in here rocking. Make sure y'all smash that like button. Make sure y'all share. Hey, make sure y'all follow. I need 10,000 people to follow me so I can be on ghetto and, you know, stream from the computer. All right, here we go. Question number 15. The following clients are presented with signs and symptoms of heat-related illnesses. Which of them needs to be attended first? So who is the first person that I need to see? Is it A, a relatively healthy homemaker who reports that the air conditioner has broken down for days and who manifests fatigue, hypotension, tachycardia, and profuse sweating? Or is it B, an elderly person who complains of dizziness and syncope after standing in the sun for several hours uh, to view a parade? Or C, a homeless person uh, who is uh, who is a poor historian has ultra mental status, poor muscle co coordination, and hot, dry, ashen skin, <laughs> ashen skin, that's funny, and whose duration of heat exposure is unknown, or is it a marathon runner who complains of severe leg cramps and nausea and manifests weakness, pallor, diaphoresis, and tachycardia? We got D. No, it's, it, so you don't have to put it in order. <laughs> you don't have to put it in order. You just got to pick one. You don't have to put it in order. You just got to pick one. There can only be one. So we got D. We got D. Okay. Some people say C. Okay. All right. I'm going to give you guys about another 15 seconds. C for ultra mental status. Yeah. Right. Because ultra mental status is a part of, you know, the what we call LOC ABC. Right. So we got C. All right. Here we go. C, 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 C. Homeboy. What? Uh, homeboy has. <laughs> okay. I got you. I got you. All right. D or C, but I'm going to go with D. All right. Rabdo. Mm hmm. Okay. Here we go. And three, two, the answer is C. The signs and symptoms manifested by the homeless person indicates that a heat stroke is happening and medical emergency 
which can lead to brain damage. Also, uh, there must be clinical signs of central nervous system dysfunction that may uh, uh, include ataxis, delirium, or seizures in the setting of exposure to hot weather or strenuous physical exertion. Patients uh, who present with heat stroke typically have vital signs abnormally, uh, or I'm sorry, vital sign abnormalities to include an elevated core body temperature, uh, sinus tachycardia, tachypnea, a widened press, uh, uh, pulse pressure, and a quarter of patients have uh, will be hypotensive. They will be hypotensive. Shout out to all 480 y'all up in here rocking with me. I know that's long. I know that's small. I know that's probably kind of hard for y'all to see. But the answer is C. Uh, D tried to trick us with pallor. Yeah, because think about this. Is that if I have a marathon runner who complains of having severe leg cramps and nausea and manifests weakness, pallor, diaphoresis, and tachycardia, the, the person is a marathon runner. Right? But this person has an altered mental status has poor muscle coordination, right? And it's hot, been in the, been exposed to the heat for an unknown amount of time. But that the, that sticks out, it's that it's the altered mental status, right? Is it is it is it makta? Is it makta? Makta? Makta. Normal. It is. So I would expect that out of a, out of a out of somebody who's a marathon runner, right? Or one of the outcomes, right? Makta. Yes. Mm, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, shout out to y'all. I appreciate all the love. I appreciate all the follows. Hey, if you guys are new here, my name is Kevin. I go by The Boot Nurse on all social media platforms. I am a nurse. I've been a nurse for three and a half years. I've worked in the ICU. I've worked in the PACU. And, I've, and I now currently work in the operating room. Um, I, I've been in the Navy for almost 16 years. I've been an instructor for a long time. I love to teach. I failed my NCLEX three times, y'all, which is why I like to do these questions. Um, so this is why I'm here. I'm here for y'all. This is why I'm hot. And by that, I mean... Uh, not as a heat stroke victim, but here for y'all. Um, make sure y'all participate. I'm kind of sort of funny, but not really. Um, the more that you like and the more questions that you guys get, I need I need at least 10,000 people to follow me because, you know, uh, yeah, I'm trying to be unghetto so I can stream on my computer. Um, so the more that y'all like, the more questions that you get. Uh, I want all the likes, all of them. Um, what was I going to say? So I created an NCLEX course because I failed it. I didn't have any direction. Nursing school sucked. They didn't really help. So I eventually had a really good mentor that kind of guided me to some really good reviews. And, you know, I told myself I never want anybody to feel how I felt. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to create something. And I and this essentially has been like three years in the making for me, um, which is the seven day NCLEX course on ghetto straight up. You already know the deal straight up. <laughs> so. Um, but, yeah, that's why I did that. Seven day NCLEX course, forty eight dollars. Once you get it, you get it forever. And it's in its pre-launch phase. So we're updating it all the time. I'm actually about to update, uh, probably put like three or four video content videos in there. So make sure you guys check that out. OK, um, don't troll my chat. If you troll my chat, you're going to get a 600, which means you're going to get muted. And by muted, uh, Manasa just muted somebody. I don't even know what they said. And I don't even care. You come into my chat acting a fool. I'm going to ban that ass. And I'm telling you, I'm going to do it. And I'm telling you right now, I don't gatekeep. I got these questions off nurselabs.com. They have a whole bunch of questions on there. On top of, they have a bunch of, uh, you know, nursing diagnosis stuff for anybody that is interested. So I love y'all. Appreciate the follows. Appreciate the likes. Also, I am going to be doing a nursing school summit. <clears throat> yes, it does work for uh, LPNs as well. I'm going to be doing a nursing school summit on October 1st. That link to register for that is in my bio. Go click on the link tree and it'll take you directly there. And it's hosted and it's hosted by True Learn and Picmonic. Um, and we're going to be talking about the new generation NCLEX. So I want you guys to go over there and check that out and be a part of that and get all that good information. I'm like one of five panelists that are going to be doing this thing live. So I think it's pretty fucking awesome. Not even going to lie to you. Been a nurse for a while. I love the recap refresh. That's what I'm trying to say. Hey, when I do the recap and the refresh, that's when I lose the most people. They're just like, bro, I don't give a fuck about what you talk about. Get to the questions. See how selfish people are. Y'all so selfish. I can't stand y'all. Anyways, I appreciate all the love. Appreciate all the likes. I do the recaps every five to ten questions. And, you know, hey, if you don't like it, that's okay. I'm just saying. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, question number 16. An anxious female uh, client complains of chest tightening, tingling sensations, and uh, uh, palpitations. She must have just found out that NSYNC is going back on tour because that's what happened to me. Anyways, <laughs> Uh, I don't know if they're going back on tour. Let me stop spreading rumors. <clears throat> uh, deep, rapid breathing and uh, carpal spasms are noted. Uh, which of the following uh, priority actions should the nurse do first? So what is the very first thing that I should do? 
right? If I don't do it, remember, it's on a systematic approach. So what is number one, two, three, four? What is the very first thing that I need to do? Right. I want to provide oxygen therapy, notify the physician immediately, administer. What is it? Uh, antox and oxalic medications as ordered uh, or have the client breathe into a brown paper bag. Slow the breathing bag. D -d 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 OK. Lou says a Patriots. Are you talking about like the New England Patriots? Because we don't like them around here, ma'am. I'm just saying paper bag is not recommended anymore. It doesn't matter what you say about it, about being recommended anymore. Is it still one? Is it still one of the ways to do it? You have to go. You would literally have to go to lecture. You would have to go to actual doc, like doctrine. Oh, Patriot nurse. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. I got you. All right. You said D. I see you. D B A. I was thinking uh, she was having an MI. Man, y'all are answering all these questions. I cannot read. Caitlin says B. Is it Raya? It's either Raya or Ria. She says A. All right. I'm gonna give y'all this answer in about ten seconds. Yasmin says B. Somebody else got muted? Oh, no. Right, we're good. All right, here we go. Here's the answer in three, two. All right. You want to have the client breathe into a brown paper bag. Just saying. Thank you for the follow. Uh, here we go. The client is suffering for hype from hyperventilation secondary to anxiety. The initial action is to let the client breathe in a paper bag that will allow the re uh, the rebreathing of Carbon dioxide. The idea behind breathing into a brown or into a paper bag or mask uh, is that rebreathing um, uh, exhale, rebreathing exhaled air helps the body put CO2 back into the blood. ABCs can't tell the physician without doing something first. That's facts. You guys, that's essentially it's just like like passing the buck. Oh, you can't breathe because you got anxiety, doc. Um, doctor, I don't know what to do. Hey, any doctor will literally be like, okay, well, did you do something? OK, well, you need to do that and then call me back if that doesn't work. I've been a nurse for 13 years. I've never seen a paper bag on my unit. Ma'am, I believe you. Look, this may hey, remember, Blair, this is perfect world. This is perfect world, not our real world out here. OK, not our real world out here. All right. So a shout out to all y'all for answering. Uh, I always I have to slow your name. Is it Makta? I, Makta? Makta. I will I be want to say Makta, but, you know, emesis bag work. That's true. It's true, Kevin. It does work. It does work. Here we go. Question number 17. Look, I say I stay messing those words up. I'm not the best at pronouncing things. OK, so don't come for me. OK, don't do it. All right. Here we go. Question number 17. An intoxicated client comes into the emergency unit with uncooperative behavior, mild confusion and slurred speech. So shout out to all my, all my ER nurses that got to deal with drunk folks. Uh, the client is unable to provide a good history, but he verbalizes that he's been drinking a lot. Which of the following is a priority nurse or the priority action of the nurse? Right. So what is priority? What is the first thing that I want to do? Right. Administer IV uh, in IV fluid incorporated with vitamin uh, B1 as ordered. Do I want to give Narcan four milligrams as ordered? Contact the family to get information about the client or obtain an order for the determination of a blood alcohol level. We got A, got D, got A. Avery says no. I don't know what that means. <laughs> what do you mean no? That's not even an answer. Got D. We got D. We got some A's. What else we got up here? What else we got? What else we got? Shout out to all 335 of y'all up here and rock with me. Make sure you guys smash that like button. I changed my answer. Uh-huh. What I tell you, you know better. You know better not to change the answer. Appreciate y'all. Make sure y'all share. Make sure y'all like. Smash that like. Smash it. Smash it, y'all. Smash it. All right, I'm going to give you all about 15 more seconds. Uh, we said, oh, you were thinking about Vornikes? Uh, no, we, 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 we ain't that far. We ain't that far. We don't got the signs and symptoms. Oh, you're thinking you're thinking about something else. I'm tracking. I'm tracking. I'm tracking. Here we go. Here's the answer in three, two. Oops, I missed the button. The answer is A, administer IV fluid incorporated with vitamin B1 as ordered. And just like that, look at you, Avery. Avery out here rocking it, girl. Marisol. Yay. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. That's what I'm talking about. The client has symptoms of alcohol abuse and there is a risk for Wernicke syndrome, uh, which is caused by a deficiency in vitamin B1. Right. So th a thiamine deficiency, which is a vitamin, uh, vitamin B1, is common in patients with alcohol dependency. 
uh, co uh, what is it? Cognitive impairments may be an early consequence of thiamine deficiency. Uh, was it Vornikis, uh encephalopathy is underdiagnosed and undertreated. So here's one thing that you guys can remember in regards when it comes to um, somebody who has Vornikis. Born it's just like Vornikis meaning that they have a, uh, a vitamin B deficiency. So it's just like you have to give vitamin B1. So you have to uh, just like, damn, how did the saying go? It's like to like you have to like if, if you're B1 or if you have B1, then you'll be one. Meaning like, you know, you'll be one of those crazies if you have a lack of a vitamin B deficiency. I know I explained that terribly, but I think y'all got it. Anybody that's ever listened to Mark Clement, y'all know what I'm talking about. I have my nursing one final tomorrow. Shout out to you, Samantha. Give B1 so you don't be one. There you go. There you go, Sierra. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, you be one. You be one. I was thinking dehydration since alcohol doesn't hydrate. Well, that's a good way to think about that, right? You don't be one. You be one. There it is. He, he even had a crack in his voice when he said it, too. That's the best part. Here we go. Question number 18. How how we doing? Uh, let's see. Uh, a nurse is uh, providing discharge instructions to a woman who has been treated for contusions and bruises due, due to domestic violence. What is the priority intervention for this patient? Arrange transport to a safe house, advising the client about contacting the police, make an appointment to follow up on the injuries or making a referral to a counselor. Let's see what we got. Taking my NCLEX next week for the third time. Jake, J Pay, same. I've been there. I failed three. I failed three times. Pass on the fourth. So my question is, what are you going to do to fix that? What are you going to do to What are you going to do to make yourself better from the last time that you that you took your exam? A lot of people are saying, "Hey, shout out to all three hundred y'all up here rocking." If you guys are new here, my name is Kevin. We're going over NCLEX questions. Make sure you guys participate. Make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys uh, follow. That's the most important because be my friend, okay? Be my friend. I need 10,000 people so I can unget on myself and not stream this way. You know what I'm saying? So appreciate all y'all. Hey, if you're new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. Are you a brand new nurse taking your NCLEX for the first time? Uh, are you a prerequisite nurse? Are you a respiratory therapist that just stumbled up in here? <laughs> so, yeah, here we go. And here's our answer. A, arrange transportation to a safe house. Safety, 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 safety. Right. Safety is a priority for this client and she should not return to the place where violence could occur. Make sure a safe uh, make sure a safe environment is provided, offer shelter options, legal services, counseling and facilitate such referrals. Uh, what is it? Um, do you know any other languages? Should I wish? I mean, I can speak Ebonics. I mean, if that if that if that helps. <laughs> I do not know any other languages, but I can tell you right now, that's one of one of the one of the things that I'm looking to do for myself. Fifth time taking my NCLEX. Hey, that's OK. Uh, was that BB BBGT? That's OK. I, I, I've, I've coached people that have taken their NCLEX like 10 times. Manasa, who is my co-host down here, she's taken hers six and passed on the seventh. All right. So you are no different from anybody else that's up in here. I'm trying to tell you that right now, because when you go to work, no one is going to care how many times you took that exam. Uh, does a consent in this? Uh, does a need consent in this case? I don't even know what we're talking about. What we're talking about. We're talking about. No, no, it doesn't. It does not. Richmond, Virginia, new grad, two weeks. Uh, 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 NCLEX in two weeks. Shout out to you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm a mental health nurse, but I always try to brush up on med surge. Thank you for doing this, Tiffany. I appreciate you being here. Uh, do you have to pay to take the NCLEX, Brooke? One hundred percent. You got to pay for that test. Hey, shit free around here. You know the deal. Um, I was thinking about uh, patient consent too. Uh, yes, we don't. I wouldn't really dig into the weeds in, in in regards to that. Don't a. That's another thing in regards to your questions. Don't add any more or any or or anything less into your question. Take it at face value. Okay. Here we go. Me too. Seventh time. As long as you don't give up, never give up. Never give up because nobody nobody's ever gonna no one's ever gonna know unless you actively tell them. Hey, I failed my exam. I promise you. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful day, ma'am. You as well. Here we go. Um, in the work setting, what is the primary responsibility of the nurse in preparation for it is for disaster management that includes uh, natural disasters and bioterrorism incidences? Uh, is it a be aware of the signs and symptoms of potential agents of bioterrorism? Is it b make ethical decisions regarding exposing self to potentially life threatening substances? Is it c uh, being aware of the agency's um, emergency response plan, or is it d be aware of what and how to report to the center for disease control and prevention? We got some C's going on up here. Appreciate all the follows. Thank y'all. Make sure y'all smash that like button. 
hit those follows. Hey, make sure you guys share because you never know who's this is going to be super, 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 super. OK, Kevin, get your fucking language together, bro. Um, <laughs> man, this is going to be you have no idea who this is going to be super helpful for. All right. We got some C's. We got some. What else we got up here? We got a bunch of stuff. We got some C's popping up in here. OK, Nessa, Nessa. Uh, yeah, Vanessa. Thank you. I don't know. Why I just called you Nessa. I'm sorry. D is important, but not primary. Yeah. So what is the primary responsibility? What is the main responsibility? I'm gonna give you guys another 15 seconds. All right. But like I was telling you guys, it does not matter how many times you take this exam. No one will ever care. And remember, this is your story. Everybody has a pen. So how are you going to write your story? You know, shout out to Pr Coach Prime. That's where I got that from. Here we go. And three, two. And the answer is C. Be aware of the agency's emergency response plan. In the, and actually, this is one of those things that's been updated uh, on NCLEX and by the National Board over the last like five to ten years. So definitely always you always need to know what's going to happen in disaster preparedness. The nurse should know the emergency response plan. This gives guidance uh, that includes the role of the team members, responsibilities and mechanism of reporting. Emergency preparedness encompasses diverse fields uh, within the hospital and regional settings. Planning membership group. or I'm sorry. Yeah. Planning membership groups. Uh, should address key aspects across these fields included, including but not limited to public safety, facilities, logistics, pharmacy, transportation, clinical uh, patient care, non-clinical patient care, media and public relations, communications, radiation, uh, infection control, and administration. Look, I know that was a mouthful. Trust me. I wish I had some water up in here. Oh, I lied. I got Gatorade up in here, baby. We Gucci. Um, but yeah. I can tell you guys, I've been in, um, I've been in, you know, mass casualty drills before, and mass, and actual mass casualties in my, uh, in my military career when I was deployed. And these are very real things um, about, you know, everybody needs to know what everybody has going on, um, because you know, you know, you'll be surprised on if you're going to be somebody triaging or if you're going to be helping, you know, stabilize patients or whatever. So it's always good to be prepared for that. That's the main and primary goal. Oh my God, I haven't been to school. Uh, in so long and I want to be a nurse, but I'm so scared of the math. And if you're scared of math and science, you might want to rethink some things. And I don't say that to be mean. I don't say that to be harsh. I'm just being completely honest. You cannot let something like that deter you <clears throat> from accomplishing a goal. If you're going to let math problems and science deter you from getting to that goal, then maybe it's not for you. But the one thing I can tell you is that math and science isn't going to change. So the only thing what needs to change is you, because if you're trying to get to the top of that mountain, you there better be some things that you got to change about yourself. Uh, failed once, uh, been a nurse for 17 years. Nobody cares how many times. Uh, Angie, let them know. Let them know. Here we go. Question number 20. Question number 20. Uh, I'm literally going into nursing uh, next semester, but damn, I don't know. I don't. That's okay. You don't know what you don't know. That's why you're here, so you can learn it. Question number 20, Michael works as a triage nurse and four clients arrive at the emergency department at the same time. List the order in which he will assess these clients from first to last. So who is he going to see first? Then who's he going to see second, third and fourth? So I need to see at least four answers, right? <laughs> what is this? What do you mean? This is America. <laughs> Don't get you slipping up. We got D. I need I need at least four answers, y'all. I need four answers. Shout out to you, Victoria. Thank you for the follow. Uh, what do we got? I need four answers, y'all. Four answers. D, the baby with meningitis or something. <laughs> what do we got? I'm going to give y'all a little bit more time. I'll probably give y'all another 30 seconds. All right. There you go. Hey, so we're going to put him. Yeah, we're going to put him. We got, you got D-A-C-B. You got some D-A-B-C, D-A-B-C. Uh, D or A, D. Okay. A Angela, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. Uh, D is probably meningitis. You're probably right, right? Hey, what? Hey, so for D, I'm gonna give y'all another 15 seconds. For D, what do you think? What wh what makes you think it's freaking meningitis? Hmm? What makes you think it's meningitis? Thank you, Lori, for the follow. Appreciate you. Uh, what is this? Can't read with you talking so much. Uh, that sounded like a personal problem to me. <laughs> Rigidity. There you go. So the answer is D A C B. All right. Nuchal rigidity. There you go. So that's the order of which we have it. I'm not going to read all these rationales because one, it's small um, and two, it's a whole bunch. So I don't want to I don't want to read all the way through it because nuchal rigidity uh, usually doesn't present in infants uh, with meningitis. So, OK, OK, OK. Valerie says she got it right. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, my God, I got it right. Why are you so surprised that you got it right? Y'all, hey, y'all Gucci out here. Y'all got to give yourselves more credit out here. OK, y'all got to give yourselves more credit. Y'all are doing awesome out here. 
Y'all are doing awesome. Here we go. Oh, hey, here's a little break for y'all. Hey, if you guys are new here, welcome. We're doing NCLEX questions, nursing questions. Uh, my name is Kevin. I go by The Boot Nurse on all social media platforms. I want you guys to go over to check out my link in my bio. That'll take you to my YouTube, my ex, uh, not my ex-wife or ex-girlfriend or anything, but just like ex, you know, like Twitter, you know, that's what we do. Um, so make sure you guys go over there and check that out. Hey, participation is the key. I want to see. I want to see participation down in the chat right now, y'all. That's what I want to see. Hey, I'm kind of sort of not really all that funny. Um, the more that you like, the more questions that you guys get. We're at 22. I need at least a thousand hundreds, you know, say a thousand hundred likes, you know what I'm saying? I don't know how that works, but you know, um, got 25 questions. Hey, but I think I got more in the chamber for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I want all the likes, all of them, not some of them, not all of them. And to kind of reemphasize what you guys were saying earlier. I fail my NCLEX three times. If you're new here, I fail my NCLEX three times. I do these questions because I wish I would have utilized social media uh, back then the way that it should have been utilized. And I always said if I failed, I was going to give back to my community. Y'all are my community, and this is how I like to give back to y'all. And I love the interaction, and I really, truly love being here three times a week. Swear to God. Um, so I created an NCLEX course for uh, 48 bucks for a lifetime. Once you have it, you have it forever. That link is in my bio. Check it out. Once you have it, you have it for a lifetime. It's in its pre-launch phase, so we're consistently updating stuff. So, want to see y'all there. Uh, we love you, Kevin. Hey, bro, man, I love you too, man. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you for all your help. Yeah, you guys are welcome. All right. Uh, also, I don't gatekeep. I got these specific questions off nurselabs.com. They have all different types of questions on there. I don't gatekeep. There's no need. There's no reason for me to gatekeep. Why would I want a high question from y'all? That shit's stupid. Right. Uh, I went through that. I went through that hassle and I don't want to I don't want nobody else to have to go through that. I'll let y'all know whatever the fuck y'all want to know. And because it's real out here. Also, don't troll my chat. If you troll my chat, you're going to get banned. That's what a 600 means. It means you're going to get banned. And Manasa, who's my co-host, she will ban that ass. Trust and believe me. Um, and yeah, that's oh, And also I'm going to be doing a nursing summit. Um, on October 1st, I want you guys to go to my link tree. It's the very first tab. Make sure you guys go register for that. I'm going to be talking for an hour and we're going to be talking about the new generation NCLEX on top of, you know, other things. And that's put that's being hosted by True Learn and Picmonic. So make sure you guys go over there and check that out. OK, so here we go on to question number 21. I'll be taking my NCLEX in two weeks and I'm nervous. Don't be nervous. Prepare for it. You guys, I, I can't tell you not to be nervous. That's insensitive because everybody is nervous, but you're going to do just fine. I uh, wish I knew about you before I took my NCLEX. That's all right, Bell. You're here now, right? You're here now. Uh, just going to grind. Okay. They got, okay, here we go. Question number 21. In conducting a primary survey on a trauma patient, which of the following is considered one of the priority elements of a primary survey? Is it a brief neurological assessment? Is it a patient's allergic uh, allergy history? Is it an, the initial pulse ox? Or is it a complete set of vitals? Taylor says A. Is it a Ambria says A, says A, A, Cassie says D. That's my sister's name. Um, Zippy says A, Brittany says D, Ange, Big Ange, uh, Nia says A, Eric says D, period, says D. Okay, Crystal says D. Who said GCS? Avery, was that you? Of course it was. Of course it was overachieving Avery. All right, here we go. I'm going to give you all about another 15 seconds. <clears throat> give you another 15 seconds. All right. Hey, if you guys are new here, welcome. Make sure you guys share, smash that like button. I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. We're doing NCLEX questions. That's what we do. Nah, Avery, don't hide now. Mm -mm. Here we go. There's your answer. It's A, a brief neurological assessment. Uh, what's the link for the questions? What do you mean? <clears throat> I said it's at nurselabs.com. I don't have a link for the questions, so you got to go over there and look at it. Uh, a brief neurological assessment to determine the level of consciousness and pupil reaction is part of the primary survey. Once the patient is stabilized, a neurological assessment should be conducted. CT scan is the diagnostic uh, modality of choice in the initial evaluation of patients with head trauma. Let's <laughs> echo says let's can go. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Hey, because hey, what if somebody shows up? What if somebody shows up? Hey, because what's part of the neurological assessment? What's the very first thing that happens in the ER? Right. Hey, sir, how are you? Hey, can you hear me? Hey, what's your name? If I don't get no response, then what? Hey, I'm new here. You may already have gone over this. Uh, does your course include the new gen? So we're working. The new gen stuff is actually being it's in production right now. Oh, my God. Siri just heard me say something. Hold on. Oh, that thought. One sec. Siri, shut Wait, up. Siri, 
Oh my God. Nice to meet you. No, I, you, hey, y'all see, I changed Siri to Australian voice, right? Shout out to Bluey because that's what I like. And if you don't like it, sorry. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, here we go. Question number 22. Um, <laughs> a 65 year old patient arrives at the triage area with complaints of diaphoresis, dizziness and left sided chest pain. Ding, 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 ding. That should be the key thing that sticks out. This patient should be prioritized in which category? We got C's. We got C's. We got C's. L-O-C, uh, A, uh, A and O. What did I say? That was funny. Oh, I did. <laughs> Yo, Siri be out here acting a fool. She lucky I like her. <clears throat> Emergency. Okay, I got you. I got you. Goddess, thank you for the follow. Appreciate y'all. Hey, we're doing NCLEX questions. If you guys are new here, make sure you guys share. Make sure you guys follow us. Most important, make sure y'all smash that like button. Emergency. <laughs> oh my God. Top of the list. All right, here we go. Here we go. Answers in three, two. The answer is C. Emergency. Hey, whoever said that, like, I'm not even lying to you. That's probably the funniest shit I think I've seen all day. Christy, hey, girl, what's the deal? All right, here we go. Chest pain is considered an emergent priority, which is defined as potentially life-threatening. If the nurse can accurately diagnose the patient with these criteria and mark as a level one trauma patient, the patient will need immediate life-saving therapy. Immediate physician involvement in the care of this patient is critical and is one of the differences between level one and level two patient designations. Just in a silly mood. Hey, that's all good. That's all good because you want to know why? Like when you see questions like that, you'll never forget them. You'll be like emergency. So shout out to y'all. Shout out to y'all. Appreciate everybody. Shout out to all 562 of y'all that are in here rocking with me. We're doing nursing style questions and Clex questions type uh, make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys share and make sure you guys follow. Following is the most important so I can unghetto myself. Unghetto. Y'all see this? This is ghetto. Don't know why I want to do this. So let's unghetto this. All right. Here we go. Question number 23. You respond to a call for help from the emergency waiting room. There is an elderly patient lying on the floor. List the order for the actions that must be performed. So we got instructing a uh, nursing assistant to get the emergency cart, establish unresponsiveness, do the head, the head tilt chin lift or the draw, the jaw thrust maneuver, call for help and activate the code team or uh, and also initiate a CPR. So remember, I need these in order. I need them in order. It's not just one. I need them in order. What are we doing? What are we doing? Is it Shandy? Shandy, thank you for the share. Z, uh, ZZGG, appreciate the follow. Remember, I need them in order. So I need to, I need to see a whole batch of them. I'm gonna give y'all some time. I'm gonna give y'all some time. I'm gonna give y'all. I'll give y'all another. I'll give y'all a minute. I'll give y'all a minute. Cause I know a bunch of y'all are waiting to drop it up in there. All right. Hey. Also, if you're new here, I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. Like, are you taking prerequisites? Are you trying to get into nursing school? Did you just start nursing school? Right. Did you graduate? What semester are you in? Or have you been a nurse for 40 years? I ain't even 40. So that means you've been a nurse longer than me. I mean, a lot of people have been a nurse longer than me. Just want to play the game, not a nurse. That's what I'm saying. I'm just trying to get on. I'm just trying to get on this God of War Ragnarok that I ain't finished and go watch Attack on Titan. Hey, shout out to AOT. Hey, I'm going to give you all another 20 seconds. Senior year, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Third semester. Okay. I see y'all out here. Last semester. Man, that's what I'm talking about. LPN for six months. That's what I'm talking about. Austin, shout out to you. All right, here we go. Here's our answer in three, two, one. Answer is A, C, D, B, and A. Or an E. Obviously, I don't know how to read, right? Currently, LPN going back to school, hopefully soon. Shout out to you. Is it Deja? Shout out to you. Jalissa says, who? Uh, I know. Wish I had people uh, who did this when I was in school. That's what I'm saying. Is that Becky? That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, I wish I knew somebody that did this. Right. Failed my first semester. OK, you failed it. So what are we going to do to fix it? What are we going to do to fix it? She's like, yeah, no. <laughs> Unresponsiveness was B, right? Correct. I think. Let's see. Yes, it was. That's not correct. Who did this for me? You know what? We'll omit this one. I don't like I don't even like this one. We'll omit it. We'll omit it. And I'll talk and I'll have to yell at the person who put this together. You're OK. You're OK. Hey, 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 relax, 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 Nancy. Nancy, pull back the trigger, girl. Pull it back. Pull it back. We Gucci. Hey, I'm a, we going to omit this one. It's OK. It's OK. We good. Five extra points. All right, cool. Everybody right now get five extra points. 
Everybody get five. And you know what? That's my bad. That's my fault. That's my fault. Everybody get five extra points. Don't worry about that last one. We good. Do we, we don't. Hey, hey, we good. We good out here. Question number 24. Question number 24. All right. In caring for a victim of sexual assault, which task is most important for an LPN LVN? Uh, is it uh, provide emotional support and supportive communication? Is it B, assess immediate emotional state and physical injuries? Is it ensure that the chain of custody is maintained? Or is it D, collect hair samples, saliva swabs, and scrapings beneath fingernails? Sabrina says B. We got some A's. What is the most important? You got to think about what they can do. You got to think. So, so think about what can an LPN do? RN says RN never delegates what they eat. Is that what that's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There he is. Okay. No evaluation, assessment, or teaching. Okay. 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 They can't assess. Okay. I'm going to give you all another 25 seconds. Let's see how we're doing out here. Let's see how A or B. Okay. It's either A or B. Which one are you going for? Remember, usually your first answer is your right answer. So if you're going to stick with that answer, stick with it. Don't change it. Tape. Oh, tape. Okay. Yeah, tape. I actually forgot about that one. <laughs> what it says? District son. Don't, don't, don't cry. Don't cry now. Don't be crying out there now. Uh, boy, I'm trying. Look, look, I see you. I see you. A. Okay. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Let's see. Here we go. Answer in three, two. The answer is A. Provide emotional support and supportive communication. The LPN and LVN is able to listen and provide emotional support for her or his patient. Um, the client is the center of care. The needs of the client must be competently met with the knowledge, skills, and abilities of the staff to meet these needs. In other words, the nurse who delegates aspects of care to other members of the nursing care team <clears throat> must balance the needs of the client with the ability of those to which the nurse is delegating the tasks and aspects of care, among other things such as the scope of practice and the policies and procedures within the particular healthcare facility. So I need to know that as the RN, that you're able to, you know, be emotionally supportive to your patient. I'm not going to send you in there if you're just like, yeah, should be all right. Like, who who does that? Who does? Like, I would I would never be able to do <laughs> That's where you have to. And it's within their scope of practices, me as the RN, to be like, hey, you know, you can, you know, you can support them. You know what I mean? However, however, if it's not within the scope of practice, I can't send you in there to do that. Right. Same nurse. Correct. So usually the same nurses, the sexual assault um, nurse examiner, I think that's what it stands for. Um, they're the ones that will do all like the sample collection and all that other good stuff. All right. So shout out to y'all. Appreciate the follows. Appreciate the likes. We're going to roll on to question number 25. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> Following an emergency endotracheal intubation. So paint the picture. Whoa. Paint the picture. Right. Nurses must verify tube placement and secure the tube. List in order. I really don't like these, but list in order the steps that are required to perform this function. So what is the very first thing that we're going to do all the way down to the last thing that we're going to do? And long term, we're able to uh, admission assessment. Deja, so you got to remember that it doesn't matter what you do in long term. It doesn't matter what you do as an LPN based off of your state regulation or where you work. It is all based off of a national standard for a perfect world exam. That's what it's for. All right. I've had so many people say like, that's not true. I can do IVs. I was just like, according to NCLEX, you cannot do IVs. <clears throat> Sorry. Now, according to the state that you're in, they allow for you to do IVs with certain certifications and certain qualifications that you have to, that you know, that you have to abide by. I was like, but according to NCLEX, you know, you, the world of NCLEX, you cannot at all do it. All right, we got DBAC. Uh, let's see, it says secure the tube in place. Confirm that uh, breath sounds are equal and bilateral. You want to obtain an order for a chest x-ray to document tube placement. You want to auscultate the chest during uh, assisted uh, ventilation. So what do we got? What do we got? Mm, 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 mm. All right, here we go. I'm gonna give you guys another 20 seconds. Appreciate the follow, appreciate the follow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate the share. Well, that's the most shares I think I've ever had. Appreciate y'all. Also, that's true. We have IV certs in our on our LVN, our LPN program. Okay. So you can, like I say, you can get IV certified, but until it changes, until it changes, according to NCLEX, 
NCLEX Perfect World, you cannot. Here we go. AMA is against, uh, was it against medical advice? And there it is. It's B, D, C, A. So B, D, C, A. You want to confirm breath sounds are equal and bilateral. You want to auscultate the chest during uh, assisted ventilation. Then you want to make sure that it's placed correctly by the x-ray and then you want to secure it. You don't secure it until you know that it's correctly placed. Okay. There we go. Hey, shout out to y'all for getting that question right. Appreciate all the follows. Shout out to all 670 y'all that are in here rocking with me. Appreciate y'all. We're going to go on. Oh, all right. Now we're taking a break. Now we're taking a break. You're taking NCLEX on October 4th. Jess, what you crying for? Don't be crying like that. We be good. Don't be crying like that. Hey, so we're doing NCLEX questions. I got these questions off nurselabs.com. I don't gatekeep. All right. So I got these questions off nurselabs.com. If you guys want to go over there and check out those other questions for yourself, you are more than welcome. I'm not going to lie to you. Some of these I don't agree with. Some of them, some of them I don't like the placement. I'm just going to be completely honest with you. But hey, this is what we got. This is what we're rocking with. And this is what we're going to use going forward. OK, so participation is the key. Make sure that you guys participate because the more you participate, uh, you know, the more I like this. I love I love I love me some nurse labs. That's what I'm saying. I do these labs, uh, these labs. I do these lives every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at uh, 530. Um, so yeah, make sure you guys participate. All right. The more likes that you give, the more questions that you get. I got about 25 in the chamber right now, but I like to add some more, you know what I'm saying? Put one, you know, little, put some in the clip. We're good. We can throw some more out there. I need all the likes. All right. Seven day NCLEX course. Not going to really harp too much on that. That's an NCLEX course that I created. It's in my link in my bio going for 48 bucks. Once you get it, you get it forever. And it's pre-launch phase. We, Hey, we're a, hey, we're at spirit and frontier. Working our way up to Emirates Airline, baby. That's what we're doing around here. So come over here. Come over there and be a part of it. So it says, are you okay, dude? Uh, trash Panda. I don't know what you're talking about. So um, here we go. Oh, hey, don't troll my chat. Don't come into my chat talking like a fool, being a fool. If you if you come in here acting a fool, you're going to get banned. And by that's what a 600 means. That means 600 seconds, which equals 10 minutes. And that's how long we're going to ban you. So pressured uh, uh, tan tangential speech. I don't know what that means. I normally talk like this. You are you are definitely new here. You are definitely new here, Trash Panda. I talk fast like this all the time. So um, I don't know how you really got that just off of me talking. But, you know, um, the schedule for what? Schedule for what? Is this every night? No, it is not every night. It is Monday, Wednesday, Fridays at um, 7 or not 730, but at 530. Um, yeah. And like I said, I don't gatekeep. I don't gatekeep at all. So I got these off nurselabs.com. Nurse Labs is great. Do something. What is this? Uh, do something. Ban me, kid. What you mean? You want me to ban you, uh, Jackson? Because we can make that happen. I mean, we can ban you. I mean, if you really want to get banned, I guess. You want a 600? We can give you a 600. I'm all about giving folks a 600. It's actually my favorite. No, it's Central Standard Time. I probably should have stated that as well. This is for both RN and LPN. So here's one thing I want to let you guys know in regards to um, LVN and uh, RN is that the biggest thing that you need to know is that you need to know what your roles and responsibilities are. As an LPN, you need to know what you can, can't do, what responsibilities you have, as well as, um, you know, what you can accept from an RN. That's the biggest, that's the biggest thing. Your, the content that we all learn, it's all the same. Literally, it's all the same. Pharmacology, respiratory, all that stuff. Welcome new nurses. Our profession needs you. Shout out to y'all. All right, here we go. Question number 26. A 15-year-old male arrives at the emergency department. He is conscious, coherent, and ambulatory, but his shirt and pants are covered with blood. Uh, uh, he and his hysterical friends are yelling and trying to explain that they were goofing around and uh, he got poked in the abdomen with a stick. Which of the following uh, commitments should be given first consideration? The stick was uh, really dirty and covered with mud. He pulled the stick out just now uh, because it was hurting him. He's a diabetic, so he needs attention right now. Or there's a lot of blood and we use three bandages. Did somebody say throw salt? Throw salt in the wound? Mm, we ain't even got all that. What you mean? <laughs> Can't be throwing salt in the wound. Think, you know, this ain't barracks medicine. That's what I like to call it. So we got B's. We got C's. What else we got? We got B's and we got C's. What else we got? District Sun put a B. I have to figure out what that was. <clears throat> all right, I'm gonna give you all about another 20 seconds. Beep, 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 beep. Appreciate all the follows. Appreciate all the follows. Hey, shout, bro, we got a thousand people up in here. Yo, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, if you guys are new here, we're doing nursing style NCLEX questions. 
I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. Smash that like button. Give me a follow. Hey, I need 10,000 people to follow me so I can be on ghetto, so I can stream from my computer. <laughs> so appreciate everybody that is up in here. Rock with me. Uh, is that Alexis? I appreciate the flowers. I appreciate the flowers. Uh, the answer is B. He pulled the stick out just now because it was hurting him. An impaled object may uh, be provided or may be providing a, a tamponade effect and removal can precipitate sudden hemodynamic uh, decompensation. Additional history, including a more definitive description of the blood loss, depth of penetration and medical history should be obtained. Surgery is often required. Impaled objects are secured in place so that they do not move. And they should not uh, and they should only be removed in the operating room, obviously, because it's stopping him from bleeding and it's keeping him hemodynamically stable. So if I move it, boom, now whatever clot or whatever was stopping him from bleeding is now is going to flush it all out. Uh, just started my LPN bridge. Shout out to you. OK, OK, OK. Uh, I'm gone. What does it say? I'm gone. Uh, I'm not answering nothing else. Oh, OK, OK. I got you. All right, here we go. This is awesome work you're doing already past nine years ago. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Psych MP in Texas. Look, hey, we need a lot of mental health folks out there. We need the mental health folks out there for sure. So here we go. Question, former EMT uh, doing my MA. Shout out to you. Here we go. Question number 27. I'm gonna see if I can make that a little bit bigger. New grad CV ICU since January. Shout out to you. Uh, question number 27. A prisoner with a known history of alcohol abuse, you know, from that jailhouse hooch, baby. Um, has been in police custody for 48 hours. Initially, uh, anxiety, swe uh, sweating, and tremors were noted. Now, disorient disorientation, hallucination, and hyperreactivity are observed. Yeah, I saw somebody just put in their DTs. Uh, the medical, yeah, the medical diagnosis is delirium tremens. What is the priority nursing diagnosis? Right. What is it? Is it a risk of injury related to seizures? Risk of situational low self-esteem related to police custody? Risk of nutritional deficit related to chronic alcohol abuse, or is it risk for other direct violence related to hallucinations? We got A's. We got A's. A's. Seizures. Tara says seizures. Okay. Shout out to all 600 of y'all rocking with us. Appreciate all the likes and all the follows. Y'all are Gucci out here. CWA score. That CWA score like a 22. So you already know what we're about to give them. How it all in the Ativan, baby. I ain't never done that before. Hint, hint. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to give you all about another 20 seconds. Jess, I appreciate the flowers. I appreciate it. Thank you. A all day. Okay. Okay, okay. Thank you all for the follow. Seizure later. Okay. Here we go. I'll give you all another 10 seconds. See how we doing. We got C. Uh, get him cold towel for his head. How doll, Tiffany, Tiffany. You know what the deal is. How doll. Here we go. Answer in three, two. The answer is a risk for injury related to seizures. Uh, I'm in high school acting like I know this stuff. That's OK. You don't got to act. Hey, fake it till you make it. But don't don't don't, don't be trying to make it like catch me if you can, because you'll go to jail uh, and we don't need that. <laughs> the client needs um, neurological hyper or neurologic hyperactivity. Oh, I just read that wrong. I'm sorry. The client shows neurologic uh, hyperactivity is on the and is on the verge of <clears throat> seizures. Seizures can recur, <clears throat> though rarely. Like uh, was a state uh, stasis epileptic I always fuck that word up. Sorry. Uh, uncharacteristic signs of seizure activity uh, should warrant further workup. Patient safety is the priority. A nursing a the NCLEX is all about nursing safety, y'all. Safety, safety. That's all what it's about. You, Delirium tremens, they're going to definitely have seizures, so you have to protect them, and uh, you have to have them on seizure precautions. I've dealt with so many seizure patients, I can't even tell you. Like, it's wild out here. It's wild. All right. Patients uh, need Librium to decrease uh, neurologic irritability and uh, Dilantin for seizures. And then they also have Thiamine and Haldol will also be ordered to address other problems. The Thiamine is given to why? Because they have a vitamin B1 deficiency, right? Remember safety. I'm telling you, everything that and everything that comes from nursing on the NCLEX, even while you are in school, it is all about safety. When not to give something, when to give something, so on and so forth. Do you do dos doses calculations too? Uh, is it is it Kara? Kara, we don't. We, I haven't done them on here yet. I haven't done doses calculation on here yet. I used to think I'd never remember all of this, uh, but I did fast paced program. Yep, there it is. Here we go. Question. 
vitamin what defi vitamin b1 <clears throat> vitamin b1 deficiency all right here we go question number 28 uh in relation to uh what is it submersion injuries which task is Im is most appropriate to delegate to the lpn stabilize the cervical spine for an unconscious drowning victim uh talk to a community group about water safety issues uh, monitor a uh, asymptomatic near drowning victim or remove wet clothing and cover the client uh, cover the victim with a warm blanket we got d's we got a's somebody put c up in here i saw a c up in here somewhere or some c's i don't even know scroll past it shout out to all 500 y'all up in here rocking with me and hey, we're doing nursing style and collect style questions i got these questions off nurselabs.com uh i don't gatekeep that's where i got them from <laughs> Did somebody just say that their nudes are in are in their bio? Hey, maybe we should go check those out. Maybe not. Don't do that. Don't do that, y'all. I was just kidding. Don't do that. That's weird. That's weird. All right, here we go. I'm going to give you all about another 15, pe another 15 seconds. Maybe so. Mm -hmm. No, no, no nudes, please. No, we, 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 this ain't that kind of party. This ain't that kind of party. All right, here we go, y'all. Here's y'all's answer in three, two, one. So the answer is monitor an asymptomatic near drowning victim. The asymptomatic patient is currently stable, but should be observed for delayed pulmonary edema, cerebral edema, or pneumonia. Appropriate decisions related to the successful assignment of care are accurately based on the needs of the patient, the skills of the staff, the staff's position uh, description or job description, the, the employing facilities, policies, and procedures, and legal aspects of care such as the state legal scope of practice for nurses, nursing assistants, and other members of the nursing team. So this patient is stable. Key word in there, asymptomatic, right? I knew it was C. D can be delegated to a tech. There you go. There you go. There you go. Thank you for the shares. Appreciate the follows. Hey, we need them follows, baby. We need those follows. Don't downplay our LPNs. We can do more than cover playing. Yeah, of course you can. I don't downplay LP. I love LPNs. I love, I love every, every aspect of nursing. You read it wrong. Hey, so what? Hey, so what's the old saying go? RTFQ. Y'all let me know what it is. RTFQ. You got to read. You got you already know what it is. We're quizzing Bella. What's up, girl? What's up? What's up? So uh, we're just doing questions. This one, I think, is specifically we're talking about like emergency emergency care. So here we go. Question number twenty nine. You are assessing a patient uh, who has sustained a cat bite to the left hand. The cat is up to date on immunizations. I'm laughing. I don't know why I can envision this. Um, the date of the patient's last uh, tetanus shot is unknown. Which of the following is the priority nursing diagnosis? Impaired skin integrity related to puncture wound and effective health maintenance related to immunization status. Uh, risk for infection related to organisms specific to a cat bite. Or is it risk for impaired mobility related to potential tendon damage? Oh, uh, Avery answered the question. Let me see. Where where you at, Avery? Tara Tara answered it. Tara answered it. Shh, they, hey, that, hey, look. Shout out to Avery. Avery, you about to be co-host. About to make you co-host. All right. I'm gonna give you guys another 30 seconds. All right. Give you guys another 30 seconds. Let's see what we're doing. So everybody's saying C. Okay. Cat scratch fever. Ew. Them infections are no joke. You right. They not. They're not a joke. Not a joke. Not a game. <clears throat> Faye, thank you for the flowers. Appreciate you. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Avery, I got you. All right, here's our answer in three, two. So the answer is C, risk for infection related to organisms specific to a cat bite, right? So we got, so we have our nursing, you know, the nursing uh, diagnosis, you know, RT or R slash T based off of what happened. And they got bit by a damn cat, right? So don't let don't let the when you do your, your nursing diagnosis, don't let them confuse you. Okay, cats mouths contain a a, a virulent organism. Not even going to try to pronounce that word. Don't care. Judge me. Say what you want. Um, that can lead to aseptic arthritis or bacteri bacteremia. Uh, infections resulting from bites of all animal species are polymicrobial with uh, aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. Dogs and cats have an oral flora. Uh, was that pa pasturella, staff, and strep most commonly? In cat bites and scratches, uh, was that Bartella, uh, Bartonella infections are an additional concern.
Don't don't do it. What you mean? Make me not want cats anymore. Well, ma'am, just don't get bit by a cat. Or don't be going out there and be like, oh, my God, it's a stray and I love him. And then, you know, they bite your face off. You know what I'm saying? Don't be going out there picking up stray cats. Get your Bob Barker on. Have your pet spayed or neutered or whatever. Uh, I was a vet tech and I knew this because of that. Look, see, look, past experiences got you to answer, Bella. That's what I'm talking about. All right. I think we got a good man. I, I'm trying to make sure that this is centered. I don't know how it's how it didn't get all the way up in there. Here we go. All right. On to the next. All right. So question number 30. We got a 33 year old patient with a history of seizures and medication compliance with Dilantin. Uh, was it Tegretol? Uh, and Tegretol is bought to the emergency uh, department by MS personnel for repetitive seizure activity that started 45 minutes prior to arrival. You anticipate that the physician will order which drug for, uh, for uh, what is it, status uh, epileticus? Is it phenotoin and uh, car uh, carbamedazine? Is it carbamedazine IV? Is it magnesium sulfate or is it lorazepam? Got D. This is this is essentially a pharmacology question, although this is considered an emergency question because you have a patient who's who was having a seizure. Out of van, okay. Out of van, okay. They got B. We got D. We got B. We got D. Out of van is a wonder drug when you see somebody have seizures. I'm just letting y'all know. I can tell y'all a story. I got a lot of stories, but don't nobody want to sit here and listen to my stories. Appreciate the share. Thank y'all. Hey, if you guys are new here, we're doing NCLEX style questions or just NCLEX questions, nursing questions. Uh, make sure you guys like, share, follow. The follows are, are, are wonderful and the most important because I need 10,000 follows so I can be unghetto. I'm just saying. And don't nobody want to be ghetto out here. We're trying to do better. I'm trying to be unghetto so I can afford groceries because it's $300 a week. I don't know what happened. Sorry. Here we go. Hold on one second. There we go. There we go. Here we go. Answer in three, two. Listen, did you guys know that there is a, a nurse that got in trouble for like stealing like 600 like medications and got caught by the cops? Now you do. Here we go. <laughs> There's your answer. <laughs> it says no, but those stories are real. Yeah, hey, you're right. You're right. I'm not going to give you no stories. <laughs> so the answer is D. It is Ativan IV. Here we go. You got it right. That's right. Uh, IV lorazepam is a drug of choice for status uh, epileticus. Benzodiazepines are the anti-epileptic uh, drugs of choice for emergent control. Lorazepam is preferred because of its rapid onset of action and is, uh, and is dosed at point, um, 0.1 milligrams per kilogram uh, via IV. No more than two milligrams should be administered per minute. Just saw the story this morning. Yeah, that story wild, ain't it? Like that story is crazy. ICU patient care tech here. I've seen this quite a few times. So I had a feeling it was D. See, that's what I'm trying to tell y'all. Like y'all experiences based off of what y'all will do will get y'all that don't get y'all the right answer. It'll get y'all the right answer. So shout out to everybody that got that, that the answer right. But no, if you got the answer wrong, understand why this is the correct answer. And then come down here, read your rationales, get into the habit of reading your rationales, okay? Because that is the way that you are able to retain the information that you're learning when you are doing your questions and your answers. OK, here we go. All right. Hey, we're taking a break. Here we go. Uh, we're doing nursing style questions, NCLEX questions. For those that ask what the NCLEX is, it's the nursing. Uh, it is the nursing licensure exam for registered nurses and licensed practical nurses, as well as licensed vocational nurses. OK, so wait. Make sure you guys participate. I'm kind of sort of feel, I'm kind of sort of funny. Nah, not really, but last week I wasn't. Today I'm all right. Um, the more likes that you get, the more questions that you get. Hey, I got 25. I got 25. No, I'm lying. We're at 30 right now, baby. I already gave y'all more. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, so likes, dish them out. I want them all. All of them. Not some of them. Not a few of them. I want all of them. I want all the follows. The more follows that I get, the faster I can be on ghetto. Seven day NCLEX course. It's a course I created. I failed my NCLEX three times. Um, and I created my NCLEX course because I never want anybody to feel how I felt. And I never want anyone to feel that they are lost on this journey of becoming a nurse, whether it's an RN or an LPN. And that's another thing. Anybody that's out there that's going to shit on an LPN, I don't care who you are. Yo, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. How's your leg? It's feeling a lot better, Avery. I appreciate you asking. All right. Um, so, yeah. Seven day NCLEX course, $48. Once you buy it, it's yours forever. 
It's yours forever. And I'm updating it. New And yes, new generation NCLEX stuff is getting put in there as well as I'm doing the NCLEX review, breaking it down with the eight sections of the NCLEX pie. So it's going to be really good, really, really much in depth. I'm trying to let y'all know. So make sure you go check it out because today's prices may not be tomorrow's prices. I'm just letting y'all know. I live for this. That's what I'm trying to tell you, Katie. I don't be playing these games. If I ever see anybody shit on an LPN, unless they are fucking, unless the LPN is just being rude and just disrespectful, then you know, I, I nip that shit in the butt. I don't play the nurses eat their young shit. I don't, I don't do that. Don't do that in front of me because it takes nothing for you to be kind. I, I tell you that right now. Um, don't troll my chat. You troll my chat, you're getting a 600, which means I'm going to ban you. Claudia, 36K. Holy shit. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate all the love. And also, I don't gatekeep. I got these questions off nurselabs.com. Okay? Nurselabs.com. So make sure you guys go over there and check that out for yourselves. But yeah, make sure you guys like, share, follow. Can paramedics get some love too? Ma'am, you want some love? Hey, shout out to all my paramedics. Shout out to my CNAs. Shout out to my MAs. Hey, if I got anybody that's in the military... Uh, you know, my hospital corpsmen, my Air Force techs, my Army medics. Hey, shout out to y'all. I love y'all, too. Y'all already know y'all my people. For those that don't know, I've been in the Navy for 16 years. Actually, matter of fact, on the, on the 27th, it'll be 16 years that I've been in the Navy. So shout out to y'all. Shout out to all my people. All right. Here we go. On to the next. Here we go. Question number 31. Um, a client arrived at the emergency department after suffering multiple physical injuries, including a pelv a fractured pelvis from a vehicular accident. Upon assessment, the client is in incoherent, pale, and diaphoretic. Now, paint the picture for yourself. They had a car accident, and they have a pelvic fracture. And they're pale, incoherent, and diaphoretic. The vital signs are as follows. They have a temperature of 97, a blood pressure of 60 over 40. I need for y'all to let, I need for y'all to know what's happening right now. They have a heart rate of 143 and a respiratory rate of 60. <clears throat> this client is mostly suffering from which of the following shocks? Distributive, hypovolemic, obstructive, or cardiogenic. Right? And I think about this. Let's paint the picture. Let's do let's do some steps. I have a pelvic fracture from a car accident. My pelvis is a very, very big space. Right. So now I'm incoherent. I'm pale and I'm diaphoretic. If I'm pale, that's telling me that I'm having a vasculature issue of some some sort. Now, my temperature telling me I'm 97, but my blood pressure is telling me, bro, how are you even alive right now? You know what I'm saying? And now your heart is freaking the hell out because it ain't got it ain't got what it's got. So it's trying to hold on to it. And then you got a respiratory rate that's just like, hey, um, what's going on? So what type of shock is that? So I'm going to give you all another 15 seconds. Bree says cardiogenic. User 71 says internal bleeding. Okay. Losing blood. Yeah. Not enough circulation. All right. Cool. All right. Here we go. Let's see what the answer is. In three, two. And the answer is hypovolemic shock. Hypovolemic shock occurs when the volume of the circulatory system is too depleted to allow Adequate circulation to the tissues of the body. The fractured pelvis, a fractured pelvis can lose about one liter of blood, hence um, symptoms such as hypotension, tachycardia, and tachypnea will occur. If left untreated, the patient will develop uh, an, is an ischemic injury of vital organs leading to multiple system organ failure. Right? Uh, I got it right and haven't done anything nursing. That's okay. That's okay, because when you here's the thing: when you paint the picture of what it's of what it looks like, you know sometimes sometimes it is that easy. Biggest things that give things away, like look at it. They were in a car accident, so there's my mechanism of injury. It was in the pelvic area, which is I know is a big area that can hold blood. They're pale and diaphoretic, right? They're pale and diaphoretic because uh they ain't got no blood circulating through the rest of their body, and their respiratory rate is thirty because they ain't got no blood circulating through their body, and the blood pressure is sixty over forty. It's 60 over 40. So that means they ain't getting no type of circulation going on anything at all. Uh, do maternity. I got a quiz tomorrow. Ma'am, uh, if you got a quiz tomorrow and you're trying to tell me to do maternity, ain't nobody doing all that. So yeah, hypovolemic shock. That's what we're looking for. Hey, but I see where your head's at though. But maternity, that was like the second hardest spot for me. I ain't gonna lie to you. So here we go. Question number 32. Shout out to all 512 of y'all in here. Rock with me. Make sure you guys like, share. And follow. That's the most important. How long have you been a nurse for? I've been a nurse for three and a half years. You're amazing for this. Selena, I appreciate it. I love doing this stuff. Um, Cole is an emergency nurse who encountered a patient who is a suspected carrier of a biological agent. <coughs> Corona. Um, which of these is not... 
I'm sorry. Uh, which of these, if found in the patient, is not classified as a Category A biologic agent? <clears throat> hey, what y'all laughing for? I'm just over here trying to, you know, clear my throat. I've been talking a lot. You know what I'm saying? Chest kind of hurt. A for you, bro. I'm just laying on them. Nah, you lost me. What you mean? You lost, yeah, hey, this is a toughie, right? So you got anthrax, you got, uh, what is it, botulism. So this is essentially where we're talking about bioterrorism and the different types of agents, right? Uh, uh, who is it? it says, um, how did you pass the NCLEX after failing more than once? How long did you study for? I passed my, I, who is that? Uh, is that love? I'm just going to call you sweet. I failed my NCLEX three times. I know botulism. Okay. I failed my NCLEX three times. And I essentially, what I did is I took my breakdown that I got that the national board sends and I was able to, you know, that's how I, that's how I tailored my studying. Would you learn this like in community? Would you learn this? Like, what do you mean? Yeah, you could, you would learn this something like in public health or community health. So I see what you're saying. Yeah. You would learn. That's where you would learn it. Four time is the charm. Four time is the charm. But remember, it don't matter where you work at. Don't nobody care. Don't nobody care how many times you took that exam. They just want to know that you took it, passed it, so you can get that ass to work. That's all they care about. That's it. So the answer is B. <clears throat> hey, I ain't even going to lie to you. This is definitely a tough one. This is definitely a tough one. Where did you go to school for this? We're talking about where did I go to school for what? Uh, I was just going to guess. And that's okay. You can guess. There's nothing wrong with guessing, right? So think about it. If I gave you 100 questions... And there were 10 of them that you didn't know, but you got the other 90, right? <clears throat> you still got a 90%. When you take the NCLEX, like the NCLEX essentially is based on a zero to 100 scale, right? What you need to do is that you need to be 50% or above. That's what it is. I guess D, but I haven't heard of it. And that's okay. And that's another thing. You've never heard of this. So now you know, you can like, man, I can go look up what type of bioterrorism, you know, issues and what category that these pathogens fall in. Uh, just graduated nursing school, starting to take my NCLEX now. This is so helpful. Shauna, I'm glad that this is really helpful for you. Super glad. Really happy that you're here. Make sure you like, share, follow. <clears throat> All right, here we go. On to the next one. All right, here we go. Here we go. Hey, if you guys are new here. Oh, that got fuzzy real quick. I don't know what happened there. Sorry, y'all. Hold on. I don't know what happened. Hey, can y'all still see that? Wait, the passing is 50 and up? Yeah, so essentially it's 50. It's a, it, and by 50, I said it's it's. It's graded like if it's on a scale from zero to 50, right? But you have to get 50% or more of your questions correctly. That's what I'm saying. Uh, uh, Stacy says, do you have a book or something I can purchase? Ma'am, if you go over to my link in my bio, uh, yeah, go if you go over to my link in my bio, um, you'll see the seven day NCLEX course. And that is my product. That is nuts. That is very nuts, right? But you got to think, this test is based on, it's computer adaptive. So the que the test will give you questions based off of how you answered the previous question. Do you learn, did, uh, do you learn being a nurse on the job? Uh, you learn how to be a nurse on the job. You learn, you learn the basics of safety and basic nursing when you're in school. You know, teaching somebody who knows nothing to showing them the bare minimum, all right? <clears throat> I didn't even read the question. Y'all want me to read the question? Probably not. Y'all already answered it. I'm going to give you guys another 30 seconds. Uh, I want to be a nurse, but uh, don't want the vax. Okay, well, that's the requi that's, that's part of the requirements in order for you to become a nurse is that you got to get the vaccinations. And if that's what they require, that's what they require. I know nursing schools require you to get all the vaccinations, but I know hospitals don't require you to work, you know, to get the vaccinations. Not anymore. Not true what? All right, let's, I'm going to, somebody's, somebody's confused about this. Hold on one second. I want to see this. A 15, okay, so a 15 year old client was sent to the emergency unit following a small laceration to the forehead. The client says that he can't move his legs. Upon assessment, respiratory rate is 20. Uh, pulse is strong. Cap refill is less than two. Uh, the triage category, what, tri which triage category would this client be assigned to? Yes. So yeah, this, so now, oh, never mind legs. Exactly. So think about it. He says he can't move his legs. But he has a small laceration to his forehead. So what's going on? So you got to think about with triage. Remember, triage is French. It's a French word to what? It's to sort, right? So at this point, how do I want to sort this person? Do I want him to be a black tag? Does he? Uh, is he a red tag? Is he white? Is white even on there? Is he a green tag? 
All right. Uh, I got into nursing school without the COVID vax. Uh, some schools will let you uh, with an exception. OK, yeah, that's what I thought. So the tag. So the so essentially the t what the tags mean it says I don't think I've ever heard of this. So essentially this is triaging. So when you do like mass casualty drills or there's like a disaster, you have to be able to categorize your patients on who gets seen first. Right. A, a neurological issue. OK. So who gets seen first? Red being somebody who's immediate that I need to see first. Black tag means somebody who is already dead. And by that, it, it, it helps you to allocate your resources. You have to learn medical math for professionals. What are you talking about? You have to learn medical math for, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm lost now. Black is basically dead or dying. Red is very critical. There you go. There you, who said that? There you go. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yellow, less urgent. Green, green can wait. Yep. Uh, I answered. So, oh, OK, I'm tracking. I was like, I didn't even I didn't even say nothing. All right, here we go. Here's the answer. So the answer is yellow. Right. The client is possibly suffering from a spinal cord injury, but otherwise he is he has stable status and can communicate. Uh, so the appropriate tag is yellow. Uh, if individuals can breathe spontaneously, follow simple commands and have distal pulses with a normal capillary refill, they are tagged, delayed and given the code yellow. So with so with uh, yeah yellow would be delayed green essentially what they what we would call the walking wounded white white which is where they can wait uh, versus like if you get somebody with a black tag they're considered dead or dying so I'll give you an example like he's yellow but if he had unequal pupils that's telling me he has a traumatic brain injury and he's probably already brain dead so I'm not going to waste my time taking care of him because I'm going to be able to he's uh, he's either dead or already dying. And so now I'm going to go to somebody who is red, who has life threatening injuries. Let's say if they have a blown off extremity and they have massive hemorrhage or if they have a uh, attention pneumothorax, you know, something like that. That's so morbid. What do you what's so morbid? Why is triage in a what? Why is triage in a what? I'm confused. What do you mean? Uh, uh, I'm not even learning uh, just what I've picked up in the ER setting. Yep. Of me waiting. Yep. Emergency stitch on in. Why are you why are you learning? Wait, it says, why is triage in NCLEX? Because you will be in those positions. You're a medical professional and you will be in those positions taking care of patients uh, in that aspect. I'll give you an example. A couple of years ago here in Texas, especially in San Antonio, there there was a, a, a what was it? It was a damn it was a, a Walmart semi truck that had like 50 or 60 immigrants that were in there that all essentially were dying from heat stroke. And when they got into the emergency room, like they had to pull everybody out and then they had to triage each and every one of them or the Sutherland Springs shooting that happened uh, a couple of years ago where they had a whole like 20 people that got shot. OK, if I have somebody who has, you know, a gunshot wound to the chest and they're still alive, they're going to surgery. If I have somebody who got shot in the head, then I, I can't Alec. Even though we're gonna we're gonna take care of them on a humanist on a humanistic era or area, I can't allocate my resources to that person because they're already dead. Okay, and it, you have you have to learn it. It's a part of medicine, and you will and you will most definitely see some questions that are like this. But anyways, here we go. Question thirty four: An ER nurse is handling a fifty year old woman complaining of dizziness and palpitations that occur from time to time. The ECG confirms that the diagnosis of a par Paroxysmal um, supraventricular tachycardia. I don't know why that was such a tongue twister. Uh, the client seems worried about it. Which of the following is an appropriate response of the nurse? Is it A, uh, you can be discharged now. This is, a, pro uh, this is a, a probable sign of anxiety. B, the physician will prescribe you blood thinner medications to lessen the, effect, uh, the episodes of palpitations. Uh, is it C, we'll need to keep you for further assessment. Uh, you may develop blood clots. Or is it D, uh, you have to stay here for a few hours to undergo but to undergo blood tests to rule out myocardial infarction. SVT. Shout out to all 447 of y'all rocking with me. Uh, hey, rocking, hey, rocking with the chat. Hey, we're doing uh, nursing slash NCLEX questions. Um, make sure you guys like, follow, share. Uh, the followings are the follows are the most important, y'all. I need I need ten thousand. I need ten thousand follows so I can be unghetto out here. You know what I'm saying? So. What are y'all thinking? So we got some D's that are up in here. Uh, Kaya or Kia, thank you for the follow. Sasha, thank you for the follow. What's funny? What's funny, Eddie? What's funny? What did you say? What did you say? 
We got B's, we got some C's, got some D's. SVT is lethal. Yep. Mm-hmm. I said A. Oh, okay, I got you, I got you. I'm gonna give y'all another 15 seconds. See how we doing. SVT is bad, so it's D. Okay. All right, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Gotta hit that, gotta hit that reset button. Look, I'm over here, I'm over here, Qu quench my thirst. All right, here we go. In three, two, uh, do you offer private studies? I'm studying for the NCLEX LPN. I do. You can go check my website uh, or you can go check the link in my bio and it'll take you there. It will say NCLEX uh, 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 coaching and mentoring. Here we go. The answer is C. We'll need to keep you for further assessment. You may develop blood clots. Uh, PSVT is characterized by episodes of rapid heart of rapid heart rate that occurs periodically and stops on its own. PSVT decreases cardiac output and can result in thrombus. Uh, what is it? These clots occur. Oh, I'm sorry. These clots could turn into an embolus, which will eventually lead to a stroke. Treating PSVT in a patient is dependent on the type of rhythm present on the EKG and the patient's hemo and the patient's hemodynamic stability. There it is. There it is. The tongue twisters is out. All right. Uh, C because SVT pulls and clots. Hey, what's a hey, what's another what's another heart defect? What's another heart defect um, that essentially you know could cause clots like that? So we have supra. So what does the word supra mean? Supra. There you go. AFib, right? AFib, right? So essentially it's saying a supraventricular, right? So meaning above the ventricle. There it is. Above the ventricle. Supraventricular tachycardia, also known as AFib, right? Or it's essentially like AFib or it's an atrial issue. Above the, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Y'all smart out here. That's what I'm talking about. It says, uh, none of these answers are appropriate. We're going to do further testing period. You're right. You're right. No, no, no. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say that you're right. But what I will tell you is that this is an exam off of a perfect world. So you can't say that it's not appropriate because what is done in the real world is not done on NCLEX world. You see what I'm saying? Don't shock on fib. Mm. What if it was VFib? Mm-hmm. Then you would shock. Stop playing. Here we go. Question number 35. Appreciate all the follows, all the love, and all the likes. Make sure y'all keep smashing that like button. Make sure y'all keep sharing. Make sure y'all keep sharing. Make sure y'all follow. Here we go. A 20-year-old male client was brought to the emergency department with a gunshot wound to the chest. Paint the picture, all right? We ain't talking about 6 9 Ain't nothing happened to him. He got beat up in a gym somewhere. I'm just saying. <laughs> Anyways, in obtaining a history of the incident to determine possible injuries, the nurse should ask which of the following. How long ago did the incident occur? Uh, what was the initial first aid done? Where did the incident happen? What direction did the bullet enter into the body? What are we thinking? What are we thinking? So it's just like, hey, so now we're trying to get a history. Now we're trying to get, you know, the history of like, hey, like what happened? Uh, who is this in? Mm -hmm. says, we were told in our advanced life support class Monday, you don't shock a Sicily B. OK. Hey, so here's the thing is that your NCLEX and your NCLEX style questions are not based off of ACLS. They're not based off of ACLS. I'm not saying that you're wrong, but you're not based off of ACLS. And if somebody's a and if somebody has a systole, right? And if somebody has a systole, which means they have they're, they're they're pulseless and they're breathless, why would you not shock them? You see what I'm saying? So think about that. Think about those other things because there's a lot. There are a lot of doc, there are a lot of doctrines and documents out there that contradict one another. I'm just saying, not saying that they're wrong, right? But yeah, definitely, hey, definitely for VFib, you <laughs> DFib. Don't be like, oh no, nah, he fine. Don't do that. All right, so here's the answer. The answer is, what direction did the bullet enter into the body? The entrance point and direction of the bullet will predict the injury to the client. Uh, in gunshot wounds, due to the high intensity kinetic energy of the bullet, the pathway is often unpredictable in nature as well as the internal organ that may be affected. The most common organ injury 
uh, are the small and large bowels at 50% and 40% respectively. Yeah, you want to know where it went? You want to know where it went? Hey, where'd you get shot at? Oh, I got shot um, on the left arm. Oh, okay. So essentially, I mean, if you got shot in the left arm and you were like, no, they was coming from the right. Okay, I might want to look at the right arm because he might have an entry wound there too. You know what I'm saying? Guys, the question is done. Oh, oh, I was like, wait, what happened? Oh, everybody's still answering? <laughs> oh, it's up. All right, let's see. Let's see. Uh, where is the entry? Okay, I see. Oh, okay, there you go. There it is. Oh, are y'all trying to look at the rationale? Let me bring this up. Let's see if I can see that. All right. Amy, are you rushing me? Are you rushing me? Is that what you're doing? That sounds like you're rushing me. All right, here we go. Question number 36. Uh, when attending, when a, I'm sorry, when attending a client with a head and neck trauma following a vehicular accident, the nurse's initial action is to what? Keyword is initial, a.k.a. what do I do first? What is the very first thing that I should do for a patient who had a head and neck injury? Provide oxygen, uh, initiate IV access, immobilize the cervical area, or uh, do oral and nasal suctioning. Let's see. All right, what we got? We got C's, we got B's. Hold that C spine. Okay. All right, Tiffany says C. Rock says C. Appreciate everybody rocking with me. Hey, make sure you guys like, share, and follow. Thanks, Jessica, for the follow. Appreciate you. Melanie says C, then D. So you're telling me it's just C? Not Amy rushing you. That's what I'm saying. Like, what y'all doing? Y'all must be new here. I didn't know it was on your time. You know, the great thing about a phone, you can take it everywhere with you. I'm just saying. Aaliyah, thank you for the follow. All right, I'm going to give y'all about another 15 seconds. Uh, you can fix your spine out of dead person. Facts. Uh, who is that? Uh, is that tr is that Trisha? Trisha, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you, C caller. All right, here we go. Why are you cheating? I don't know what you're talking about. Here we go. In three, two. So the answer is C. Immobilize the cervical area. Do like mobilize that? Uh, what that? That C spine. Clients with a suspect. Suspect. Oh my God. Clients with suspected or possible cervical uh, uh, spine injury must have their neck immobilized until a uh, formal assessment occurs. Maintain cervical uh, spine, spinal immobilization and minimize neck movement, partic particularly during transport. Uh, beware, uh, beware the absence of neurologic findings um, does not eliminate the possibility of a spinal cord injury. Lord of mercy. I don't want to talk around here. Let me see what y'all talking about. We got C, C. I appreciate all the follows. Thank you, guys. Appreciate all the follows. Let's see what else we got going on here. See what else we got going. All right, cool. I think we got that. Somebody said, hold that C-spine. We're going on to the next one. That's it. No more, guys. That's it. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. And what I'm about to do is I'm going to turn this thing around. Yo, what's up, y'all? How y'all doing? I know some people are just like, yo, um, yeah, you missed it. It's all good. When is the next one? The next one, what's today? Today's Wednesday. So the next one's going to be on Friday. That's the next time that we're going to do these lives. You're welcome. I appreciate everybody. No, I want more. Look, there's a lot of things I want and I don't get it. Hello. You have fun, Eddie. I appreciate you. I love that. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate everybody coming by. Hey, my name's Kevin. I go by the boot nurse, like the shirt says. You know what I'm saying? Um, Sonny, you're welcome. Uh, I do these all the time. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 530 Central Standard Time. Um, and right now I'm essentially just going to do like an AMA type deal. Y'all can ask me, you know, ask me questions about nursing and whatever, whatever y'all want to ask. I'm here for it. Y'all. Thank you. Uh, this is my second time taking the test on NCLEX. Shout out to you. Uh, I'm nursing school right now looking to join the Navy. Do it. Appreciate your help. You're welcome. Do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You should do more. I'm going to do more, but on Friday, uh, this is great question. Uh, does it feel like it's confusing me? I gotta look. You gotta, I got Relias is Relias is confusing me. You use Relias. I, I, you must work at like a military hospital. So helpful, especially since I'm going into med search tomorrow. Shout out to you. What's the best advice for taking an exam? I feel like uh, that's the hardest part. Um, when it comes to taking any exam, you want to recreate the testing center. So everybody goes into a testing center that's quiet. You know, do the same thing. Don't be on your phone. Don't be texting. Don't be on snacks. Don't do anything. And then when it comes to studying for your exams, think of those areas that you have the toughest time with. Now, in your nursing school, I recommend being in a group, like a small group, like anywhere, like 
you and like three other people. That way you can split up, you know, the notes and then you can put them all together when everything is said and done. So now you know the exact areas to focus on. How many years do you have after graduating before happening to take continuing education? So it all really just depends because once you graduate, your stuff is good for two years. And so um, you won't have to renew your nursing license until like two years or a year and a half, depending on whatever your birth month is. So I just started taking continuing education right after that. So I didn't even have to think about it. What's the best way of learning uh, like block rhythms, like for EKGs? Mm, I actually just took an EKG class and I would actually have to look at them like they have those little sayings, but I don't know them right off the top of my head. Um, so I'll just be completely honest. Hey, I'm going to let you know that I'm not the most perfect person, but at, like when it comes to EKGs, uh, I had to learn that. I literally, when I worked in the ICU, had to stare at them to figure them out. So um, how do you take the real life situations out of questions and make it in NCLEX world? That was a really hard part for me because when I was learning the NCLEX, I had to unlearn everything I've learned uh, while I was working as a hospital corpsman. So where am I? I'm in my office. Um, are you an ER nurse? No, I'm an OR nurse. Winky Bach. What is it? Uh, it is... It is like something, something, something drop. That's what that is a winky bot, something like that. I always forget them. Like I really do. But like if I saw them, I'm like, oh, I know that's second degree heart block or I know that that's a fib or I know that that is um, I know that that is uh, uh, torsats or something like that. You know what I mean? So there's that. Um, there was another. Oh, so the way that I take I had to I had to unlearn. I had to unlearn it all. I hear this dude. That, that's my that's my co-host. He's screaming about something. He probably fell. Wait for it. There it is. There it is. He must have fell because, you know, he's a boy. and He's 18 months and he just decides to think that he can fly. Oh, my fucking God. Hold on, y'all. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere, y'all, because he really screaming out here. All right, we're good. All right, we're good. We're good. We're good. Had a had to do a dad moment. Had to do a dad moment. All right, here we go. All right, what what, what else y'all got? What other questions y'all got? Uh, does anyone know if I have to do clinicals in all? Yes, you do have to do your clinicals in all in all different departments. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to learn labor and delivery and then go to the ER. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, is there a limit limit on how many years you can take the NCLEX, Claudia? So it depends on what state that you're in. It depends on your state. So like I said, Texas, you can do multiple um, like you can do uh, multiple attempts, like in a four year period. Uh, New York, you have unlimited attempts. Florida, I think you can only do it three times before you have to like go to like a board of the board of nursing before they're just like, yeah, we'll let you do that. So my son slammed his finger into like the door because, you know, he want, he likes to pull drawers out and slam stuff. You know, he's a toddler. You know, he's 18 months. So he likes to touch stuff. And he slammed his finger. He slammed his finger in the door and I screamed bloody murder. Not me out here thinking that he like jumped off the top of the couch because, you know, he liked to do that. So but he's good. He good out here. He good. He good out here. So shout out to y'all. Shout out to everybody that's rocking with me. I appreciate everybody coming to do the questions. If you're new here, I do those questions every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 530 Central Standard Time, Texas time, because that's the only time that matters. 
All right. But I want to know who you are, where you guys are from, where you guys are at in your nursing journey. Um, like I said, I've been a nurse for three and a half years. I've actually been an educator for eight years. I was a surgical tech instructor for about three and a half years. Uh, then I became another instructor for multi, uh, another. This is all while I was active duty. Hey, from Dallas. Hey, what's up? Shout out to you. Um, I also um, was an instructor for pre-hospital trauma as well. Uh, I'm a trauma nurse uh, core, uh, core course instructor, uh, you know, a plethora of other things, too. So I've been teaching for a long time and nursing has just been what I've been wanting to do for 10 plus years. And I love to be able to give back by doing this aspect of teaching and so on and so forth, you know, so. But I want to know who you are, where you were from. Uh, first semester, Murray State, Oklahoma. Shout out to Oklahoma. Go Horns. Yeah, I said it. Um, that Hey, that day is coming up. I'm just saying that day is coming up. Um, what does this say? Uh, I'm a Fort Worth. I'm in Fort Worth, Texas. Just started school. Nursing school four weeks ago. Shout out to you, Sophia. You're gonna do, y'all are going to do great. Uh, I'm a nursing assistant uh, doing uh, surgery scheduling. Just looking out at a community college for RN. RN, that's a good spot. That's a good way to go. That's a good way to go. Uh, thank you for all that you do. Nurses are true heroes. Shout out to the nurses. Who's a PA? Jessica, you're a PA. Oh, that's Pennsylvania. <laughs> Ohio LPN for seven years. Just graduated RN waiting for the board. Shout out to you. How much pharmacology is on NCLEX? Uh, pharmacology is the second largest section on the NCLEX at like 18%. So pretty big. Med search nurse in Indiana. Shout out to you. I'm nervous wreck mainly because my exams are coming up. Hey, prepare for those exams. If you stay ready, you ain't never got to get ready. Just, just being honest. I wish I would have had the different mentality when I was in school, but we all have that same mentality. We all go through the same nerves. Everybody does. So how you're feeling is very normal. Um, about to apply for nursing school. Uh, any helpful tips? One one helpful tip I'll say about going to nursing school is volunteering. They love to see that on nursing applications. Getting getting as high and your science grades are by far the most important, even though the rest of those other grades will help your GPA. But your science grades are by far the most important. You want A's. B's are OK. You don't want C's, although I have seen people get C's and get into nursing school. Um, but volunteering, go to your local hospital, go to their Red Cross, volunteer. And then when you submit your application for nursing school and you have that that uh, letter from the Red Cross saying that you volunteered however many hours for however long. That's what nurses want. That's what these old crusty ass nurses want to see in nursing school. Y'all, they want to see that you can give back to the community by helping out in some way, shape or form. OK, um, I'm not just talking about my tease. I'm getting into the program. Florida girl. Shout out. I lived in Florida for a little bit. Not when a fan, but whatever. Um, NY here, LPN, uh, new RN grad prepping for the NCLEX. Shout out to you, ma'am. Shout out to you. MA is me oh, in your first semester. Okay. Hi from the NYC, Brooklyn. Um, I'm from Jersey. I'm a cardiac tech and a realtor. Look, you are, I, I, as soon as you said realtor, I was like, I already like you. Uh, I'll be done with my PM program this Friday. Shout out to you. How do you feel? Oh, how do you deal with tough nursing professors? Uh, the biggest thing about people that are tough nursing professors is like they talk to you like you don't like you've never lived life. Um, and then you, you have to navigate older people or older individuals in regards to anything. Um, I don't like people talking down to me. However, I will articulate how I say my question to them so they don't try to be condescending or demeaning to me because you don't if you don't know, you don't know, you know, and then, you know, if it becomes an issue after that, then I would be like, look, I don't know what the issue is. I had a problem like that with one of my professors and she was just like, oh, well, I'm sorry that, you know, that it comes off that way. And I was just like, no. And we were cool after that. I feel like pathophysio uh, I feel like pathophysiology is about to take me out physically and mentally. <laughs> uh, we have to get an 80. Path hey, pathophysiology is all about the disease processes and how they affect the body. That, that's great. Like, that's a great class, my opinion. It was one of my favorites. Girl, make sure you pass and get out of the classes. Facts. I just took my NCLEX yesterday. Shout out to you, Ellen. Hey, like, come back up in here on Friday and let us know. Let us know. Let us know when you pass. Pharmacology taking me out. Facts. I did not do well in pharm pharmacology. The class I did well in, but pharmacology for nursing on the NCLEX, not so much. I live in Florida with you. I don't live in Florida. I used to live in Florida. Not no more. 100% agree. Just so much to retain. It is a lot to retain. And that's why I said that it's really cool and better if you get into a group. Of if you're in nursing school, especially get into a small group, you three other people divvy up, like especially like if you're in med surge, like divvy up all 15 of those sections until, you know, into into quarters. Divvy up what time on Friday, 530. 
I actually already have like a live, like an invite uh, thing inside my bio. You guys can go or um, inside my on my page and you guys can go check that out. So like I'll be there 530 uh, and I worked and I work with you. When? When? When did that happen? When did that happen? I'm lost. I passed mine last week. Thank God. Shout out to you. Thank you. Glad uh, I have come. Uh, I have come across your life. Hey, look, I'm saying that's why I try to tell people, make sure you guys follow. Make sure you guys share. Because sharing, you know, first of all, sharing is caring, number one. But then it's like I try to keep it as authentic as possible. 2010 to 2014. That's yeah, it's funny because that's exactly when I was there. That's exactly when I was there. Yep. From 2012, 2013, though, I wasn't there. Just saying. Uh, yeah, I did study groups with Patho and it helped me tremendously. I'm trying to tell you, it'll help you. Daughter took NCLEX yesterday praying. I, I, I have no doubt. I have no doubt for anybody that's going to go up there. NAS. Yup. I mean, I was actually, I was not there in 2012, 2013. So what else you guys got? Shout out to everybody. Shout out to people that are joining. Hey, my name is Kevin. I go by the boot nurse. We're, you know, we're talking, you know, nursing, NCLEX, you know, licensing stuff. You know, essentially about whatever you guys want to talk about. Um, been a nurse for three and a half years. I worked in the ICU for uh, over a year. Um, got some PACU experience as well as some OR experience. And that's where I work at now. So shout out to y'all. So I want to know who you are, where you're from, where you're at in your nursing journey. I'm trying to foster a good conversation up in here, up in here. Uh, did anybody black out during the NCLEX? <laughs> what? Uh, I'm taking I'm taking mine tomorrow. Black out. Lord of mercy. No, I didn't black out. I don't know if anybody ever blacked out, but I do know tons of people that either got the BGs that threw up before or that cried. I can tell you that your advice for clinicals, uh, your advice for clinicals getting so much stressful with me, professor. Oh, your advice for clinicals get getting so stressful with mean professors. I would flat out. The thing about it is just like it's all about how you articulate your message. Right. It's all about how you articulate your message. But then even when you're articulating your message, you got to look at yourself first to be like, hey, what am I not doing? You, like you have to do that, because if you don't, they're going to tell you. They're going to tell you about yourself and then you're going to take offense to that. So you need to figure out what you're not doing for yourself first. Right. So think about that. And then once you figure that out, then that's when you uh, approach them and being like, look, I'm trying to figure this out. I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. You know, like I need a little bit more guidance. Usually once you look within and then you approach them, you know, you have a better appreciation and understanding for those things. Um, but anyways, nice to see you. I was a nurse with you. We fought. We made up. Hold up. Hold up. Wait a second. Now I think it's ringing a bell. Did you used to work in labor and delivery? Was I mean to you? And I, and I'm pretty sure you're the one. I'm pretty sure you used to call me the asshole in the orange jacket. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the BGs is real for that exam. I'm like, y'all know. You'd be like, yo, I got to go. Caller, yeah, you were mean. Yeah, we were. Yeah, you're the little one. You're the you're the little one. I remember. I remember. I remember, and I was a surge tech, and we used to do C sections all the time. <laughs> Yo, that is hilarious. Um, hold on, let me read this real quick. Um, I'm out of, I'm out at the nursing for 13 years. Now I'm going back to take my NCLEX soon. I'm anxious. Any advice? Study for it. Study for it. Um, that's probably not the answer that you want me to that moment to tell you. But if you've been out of school for like 13 years and now you're going back to take your NCLEX, I would recommend finding a really good review that gives you everything that you need, such as, you know, content, the questions and time, because now you got to pick you got to pick up. You got to pick up like where you left off. Uh, yeah, we were mean to each other. His patient was dying. Oh, OK. I sure did. Ha <laughs> ha. Nice to see you. Kept. Yeah. OK. I remember. I remember you now, Gary. I remember you. Yeah. We used to do CSA. Actually. I used to do C-sections and you, yeah, I remember, I think you were a JG, you were an ensign and then a JG and you hated working with me because you were just like, why is he so mean to me? And I was just like, because I, I, if I remember right, and I said some really mean shit, I was just like, they just give anybody nursing degrees and now look at me. Now look at me. Now look, see, now look at me. Not, I'm not, I got humbled. I got humbled, ma'am. Look at that. I got humbled. <laughs> oh, hey, that's really funny, though. That's really funny. Uh, now, nah, some nurses don't do blood, honestly, or puke. Is ATI enough to prepare for the exam? Uh, I mean, 
put it this way. ATI is in the schools. So I would so I would think there's a reason that they're in the schools. But I I personally don't like ATI. I don't like the format of the questions. And another thing I didn't like is for the fact that I wish I would have gotten prepared more while I was in school. But in school, it was only like institutional quizzes or, or, or tests. And then they gave us like HESI stuff. And I was like, I was not mean. Stop it. Stop it. I was not. I was not that mean. Um, and so like a lot of people swear by ATI. A lot of people swear by ATI. I used HESI in school and I hate HESI. I hated that. I hate everything about Elsevier or Evolve or whatever you want to call it. You know, so I don't like HESI. I, when I studied for school, oh, I'm sorry. When I studied for my NCLEX, I used Kaplan. I, li listen, I used UWorld like three times. I used Hearst. I used Kaplan. I used Mark Klimek. I used Board Vitals. I used the Saunders book. I had Lippincott. Uh, there was a whole bunch that I used. Me, nurses are the best nurses based on my experience before. It depends. It depends on the level of 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 being mean right i wasn't a nurse then so i wasn't i wasn't mean i was a surgical tech and i was like a service senior uh i was like the the the, the general surgery coordinator and i worked in c-section for a long time in labor and delivery and so she's specifically talking about how her and i used to butt heads because the nurses that worked in labor and delivery who never did c-sections oh they never rarely did c-sections so they didn't know how to do aseptic technique they didn't know how to do all these other things so we as a surgical techs had to teach them and her and I used to butt heads all the time. And it'd be more like me just telling her that. Telling her some mean stuff. And I was just I was not nice. So but I'm nice now and I'm glad that she remembers me because now she's like, hey, Kev, what up? Kev's on the bus. Hey, y'all. Kev's on the bus. You know, that's, that's what she's doing now. So um, I love ATI for classes, but didn't like it for Hesse. See, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, AT, uh, I hate ATI, but uh when I get good grades, it makes me feel more confident. That's what it's supposed to do. Getting good grades is supposed to make you feel more confident. We were using Evolve and ATI. Oh, Lord of mercy. Uh, I have HESI as well and struggling to study for the exit uh, HESI. Any advice? So the one thing I'll say is the exit HESI should, I think that if I remember the exit HESI consists of like leadership, transitions, management of care, stuff like that. That would be the area. That would be the areas that I think that you would need to focus on. If I, if I remember correctly, but then again, that was five years ago. I don't know exactly what's changed in regards to HESI. Um, I don't know why they keep using ATI because it's a racket. So who's calling me HM1 up in here? What the hell? Who's calling me HM1. Who is that? Ma'am. Hello. User 1282. Shout out to y'all. Hey, shout out to all 92 of y'all rocking with me. Hey, that, today was a good day. That is the most likes or the most uh, uh, shares I've ever had, 415. That's wild, y'all. That's wild. I had a thousand people up in here listening to me run my mouth, which is also wild. Why? Only God knows why. So uh, Archer or you world? Um, I would say Archer, mostly because it's cheaper. But they're both good. Like I told you, like for people that are in here, I don't shit on, I don't shit on other people's reviews. I just won't recommend them. And if you ask me, I'll just ignore them. I'll just be like, eh, OK. So but I've used a lot of reviews and the thing about it, the reviews out there, they work, you know, but they may not work specifically for you. You got to think about what type of learner are you? Are you auditory? Are you kinesthetic? Are you a read write? Are you are you uh, are you a visual learner? Like, do you like to read books? You can't put a book in front of me because I'm falling asleep. Um, do you uh, do you like audio books? Or do you like uh, like uh, like podcasts? Is that a way that you uh, uh, retain your information? You know, are you a combination of all of them? You know what I mean? So um, I didn't when I use you world, you world only gave me questions and rationales. But I had a huge and I, when I tell you a huge, a huge issue with content because I was an online student and they like and by online, we had to teach ourselves. Like they didn't give us videos. They didn't give us. We didn't do online lectures. They didn't give another. They just gave us the book and they were just like, hey, you're a self learner. Go figure it the fuck out. And I'm like, oh, what? So now, you know, with Archer, I love because, you know, not only is it doesn't doesn't necessarily not break the bank, but um, you get content videos and you also get a uh, uh, um, Q&A. So Archer's been around for, uh, I think, about five or six years. So that's just something, you know, 
I, I, I look up, I look up to those reviews that are like that because it actually makes me it makes me want to continue making my review to, you know, to be up there with them. And that's exactly why I do it because I do it for y'all. My school uses uh, Evolve 2, Trash, um, Joanna, Joanna, what's up, girl? It says you're you're the best. You're the best. DJ Kyla said that. Um, did you have time for self-care during nursing school? Um I did. Uh, I actually had myself on a schedule. I was very, very blessed when I was in nursing school because when I went to nursing school, I was on act active duty the whole time. And so I, you know, eventually became like a clinical coordinator as a surgical tech. And, you know, I had a bunch of time for me to go to the gym, a bunch of time for me to go to school, a bunch of time for me to study. So I, I was very regimented. Like I was just like, hey, at 530, I'm doing this. At nine, I'm doing this. At 11, I'm doing this. At 12, I'm doing this. And then, you know, at a certain time, I just stopped studying. Because I was able to allocate that time for myself. I was very regimented at that point. Hell, I think one time me and my well now ex-wife, uh, she was like, hey, I want to go to Vegas. And I'm just like, dude, I'm in the middle of my semester. And she was just like, well, that's fine. You can study it there. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? And then next, you know, we go to Vegas and I couldn't even enjoy myself in Vegas because I was just like, I have a test in two days. I can't. I have a test in two days. There's no way that this is going to work. I, you know what I mean? So, um if you're going to do the self-care, definitely do it when it is warranted, a.k.a. after your semester is over. So I took the NCLEX for the second time today. Shout out to you, Sierra. It cut off at 85. Shout out to you, Sierra. OK, girl, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, so come back to us. Come back to us on Friday and let us know. Come back to us on Friday and let us know. We're going to say congratulations right now. And you got the good pop up. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, come back to us on Friday, though, and let us know when it is official, because the good pop up is not. It is the unofficial of the unofficial. Right. I've seen people get the good pop up and fail. I've seen people get the bad pop up and pass. You know what I'm saying? So we got to wait until you got to wait for those results to come in. Right. But I have no doubt. I have no doubt that you are about to be part of the shit show. I'm just saying. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, you're going to be a nurse, you know, so shout out to you. I sure will be live. Look, I'll be here 530 Central Standard Time because that's the only time that matters in the great state of Texas. Just saying. <laughs> so shout out to y'all. I'm going to hang out for about another 20 minutes. I'm going to hang out for about another 20 minutes, y'all. Maybe a little bit less than that. It all just depends on how I feel. But what qu what other questions did you guys got? Shout out to everybody that's coming in here. Um, my name's Kevin. I'm a nurse. We're going over nursing stuff, questions, Q&A, whatever y'all want to talk about. I want to know who you are, where you're from. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Um, what should our UWorld score be before our test? So when you take UWorld, it should give you, um, you want to have anything at least 50 or above. You want it to be in the 60s. The 60s is what we would consider a green because remember, the NCLEX essentially is graded on a, a zero to a 100 percent scale type type of deal. Right. You need to get at least 50 percent of your questions or more correct in order for you to pass. All right. Um, so when you're doing your U world quizzes and it's giving you like a numerical number, look at that number. If you're getting 50s, that means you're like teetering on the line. If you're getting 60s, that means obviously you're, you know, you're above the passing line and it tells you, you know, very likely chance of passing, so on and so forth. OK, so take a look at those. Uh, there was a lot of case studies on there. There should only be three case studies on there. You should get a minimum of three case studies with because according to the NCLEX test plan, you'll get 18 case study questions. And by 18 case study questions, they're broken up there. There's six of them. So you'll get three case studies with six case study questions, totaling 18. Uh, I'm going to school for MA. Uh, can I have advice? Well, what advice do you want? Texas area here. Shout out to you. Uh, I've been an LPN on telemetry for five years. I've been a part of the shit show. That's what I'm talking about. Already part of the shit show. Now you're about to get more responsibility, more pay and more of the shit show. Don't you just love it, Sierra? Don't you just love it? Uh, before graduating, before graduating, what what happened? What, Alexandra, what'd you ask? I didn't see what you said. Um, I failed NCLEX four times, but now going, uh, but not, but now give up not studying. I, what I saw you by accident. What do you mean? Uh, can you explain insulin? What do you want to know about insulin? What does insulin do? How about you explain insulin to me? Yes. Uh, it's a six piece of like six piece, dark meat, white meat, or a mixture. It's a mixture. <laughs> uh, what if I, uh, what if I'm crazy considering nursing school after my MBA at the age of 40? What does your age have to do with anything? 
Your age has nothing to do with anything at all, period. So you're not crazy at all. You know what's funny when I hear people say like, hey, you know, I'm 40 or 50. Uh, should I go back to school? You mean to tell me, are you too old to learn something different? You're never too old to learn anything different. Trust and believe me. Trust me when I tell you that. Um, uh, more pay for the shit show. That's what I'm trying to say, right? That's crazy. Do you, do I provide one-on-one tutoring? I do. If you go to my link in my bio, it'll, you'll see the, the tab where it says NCLEX coaching and mentoring. That is my one-on-one tutoring. I'm actually about to open up to group, uh, to, uh, to group tutoring or group coaching. And, uh, that's only going to be open to five people at a time. So, uh, that's actually in the works. That's something that'll probably be out here in the next week or two. So, your advice for uh, time management and nursing school, uh, write it down. And number one, you need to keep people out. Uh, do you like being a nurse? Uh, I do enjoy this. Here's what, here's the thing is that that's a very, that's a very broad statement because being a nurse, people associated with working in the hospital and just working at pa- working bedside, doing patient care. That's not necessarily, that's not true at all. I'm not going to say necessarily, that's not true at all. Being a nurse is an asp is, is is the entire global spider web aspect because as a registered nurse you can do so many things. Um, I will be completely honest with you. I I have a love hate relationship with bedside because I hate bedside because of essentially how we're treat how you're treated by administration. Um, how you do so much work and have so much responsibility, but so but for less pay. Um, but I do love the patient interaction when you have good patients. And I do love the things that you learn in, in regards to time management, um, you know, the nursing, di- <clears throat> nursing diagnosis and all the thing, all the skills that you acquire while working as a nurse. Um, I do think bedside is ghetto, but I, and I don't and I don't believe that everybody should stay at bedside. In my opinion, you should do three to five years at bedside and you should be progressing in a different direction to do something else. Um, so do I like being a nurse? I do. Do I like bedside nursing? Eh, not so much. Uh, what does that say? Um, for, yeah, for, so for time management, what you really need to do, you need to cut everybody off. You need to put your phone away and you need to actually write down what you like, get an Excel spreadsheet and write down hour by hour, what you need to do. Period. You need to write down hour by hour what you're doing. And then, you know, after a couple of days, you need to audit your time. And once you audit your time, you need to get rid of all the fluff that doesn't need to be there. And you need to get rid of people who are not going to be pushing you in the right direction. Your nursing degree and your nursing license is going to say your first name and your last name. It's not going to say it's not going to say, you know, what's your name? Is it Joanna? It's not going to say Joanna and husband and kids. It's not going to say Joanna and mom and sister. It's going to say Joanna, your first name, your last name. And then your license is going to say the same thing. But you're going to have a license number on there. So that's how you manage your time. Uh, was that live, laugh, love? You're welcome. Came back to let you know I passed my NCLEX on Monday. Autumn, shout out to you. Everybody give Autumn some love right now. Everybody give Autumn some love. Every, all 72 of y'all better say, Autumn, I love you for being part of nursing and you're now you're a nurse. We love you. Welcome to the shit show. Congratulations, Autumn. Congratulations to you. Uh, what's this? Steffi says, not seeing your link in the bio for tutoring. So if you go into the, the link tree, the tutoring is the NCLEX coaching and mentoring. It should be in there because I updated it yesterday. And if it's not in there, then I'll make sure I'll get that in there. Let me see. Let's see what it looked like. Let's see what it looked like. Shout out to all 74 y'all. Oh my God, I got 13 things in here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Congrats, Autumn. Congrats. You go, girl. Uh, how much does nursing school teach you? For the real job. So nursing school teaches you the basics of nursing. You will learn the real job of nursing once you get into nursing. Like once you start working as a nurse. Like that's all that's just being all the way real. Um let's see this link tree. All right. So yeah, you know like that's 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 essentially like how that goes. You know how much you know how much nursing school teaches you. Nursing school teaches you the basis of the basics and they you know the biggest thing is that you need to be able to perform as a basic safe nurse. You're not expected to know you know, like what an impella device does, you know, you know, like most nurses are just like, what the fuck is an impella, you know, or, you know, how do you, how do you do, uh, well, you know, what is the continue, the continuous renal replacement therapy? You're gonna be like, well, how do, what is that for? You know what I'm saying? Like, but I do expect for you to know what the norm, what the EKGs need to look like and how do I take care of that patient? You know, what's up with my link tree, man? I think I'm, that's weird. I'm going to have to go in there and I'm going to check that out. 
Uh, school prepares you for the NCLEX. That's how I feel. School prepares you to graduate. That's how I feel. School prepares you to graduate. They don't prepare you how to take the NCLEX. Because if they prepared you to take the NCLEX, they would be giving you NCLEX style everything from day one. That's exactly what they would be doing. But if they started giving you NCLEX style stuff from day one, the dropout rate for nursing school would be would be horrendous. It would be terrible. Because it takes a while for you to actually, you have to know the basic learning concepts, you know, like fundamentals and health assessment and stuff like that before you can start to understand uh, NCLEX style. Que- like imagine if I gave you an NCLEX style question and you have no idea what the nursing diagnosis is, because before you become a nurse, everybody thinks that they're that, that, you know, going to a nurse or being a nurse that you do medical diagnosis like, hey, they have pneumonia. No, you can't do that. You have to say in it pay uh, like uh, uh, ineffective uh uh, gas exchange or breathing patterns or something like that for somebody who has pneumonia. You know what I mean? So you have to learn those concepts and they put so much pressure on you. Yeah, they do. They put a lot of pressure on you. They put a lot of false pressure on you. However, some of that pressure is actually really good because when the shit hits the fan in in real nursing, when you are out here by yourself, it's on, it's only you. You know what I'm saying? It's only you and you got to protect. You got to be you got to protect you and you got to you you got to you got to know what's up you really got to know what's up out here i don't know why my link tree is not working so now i'm getting kind of annoyed so we're at the i have to i'll get the i'll get the link tree stuff figured out i don't know why it's not working because it was working for me the other night so we'll get we'll we'll get that taken care of get that taken care of for y'all so yeah i'm gonna hang out i'm gonna hang out with y'all for about another 10 minutes true about false pressure yep yeah they put all this they put all this pressure on you and then they then they then sometimes they they like they degrade you and they talk to you. I had a nurse who talked to me like she was crazy and I was like, "Bro, I've been on two deployments. I don't need you talking to me like you've lost your goddamn mind." And then she was just like, "Oh." And I was just like, "Oh, I'm sorry. Oops. <laughs> My bad. Sorry." Did I see that man AJ jump over here? Oh, man, I thought I saw him jump up in here. So anyways, shout out to everybody that's jumping up in here. Shout out to all 61 of y'all. I appreciate y'all being in here rocking with me. What other questions do you guys have about nursing, NCLEX, you know, all that good stuff? What else y'all got? What else y'all got? If you guys are new here, my name's Kevin. I go by The Boot Nurse. Uh, check me out. Uh, YouTube, Instagram, everything is at The Boot Nurse. Everything. Uh, I think Linktree is just being weird. Like, Like for real weird. I don't even know why. Anyways, but yeah, what other questions y'all got? Hey, so that's another thing. Make sure you guys follow. I need I need 10,000 people to follow me. And if I can get 10,000 people to follow me, I could use this fancy ass camera that I got right here and I can stream from a big screen and y'all can see the questions and nobody's got to be like, what's the question? I can't see it. Turn it. Why is the question so small? Like. That's the shit that I hear all the time. Y'all are so, not y'all. Some people are just so just complainy pants. You know what I'm saying? My IG is the boot nurse. Everything is the boot nurse. YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Thread, Facebook, all that. The boot nurse. Let me see something. Link, tree. Aw, fiddlesticks. Whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, wait. Let me see. I think I know why it's not working. Oh, but yeah. What else you guys? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. No problem. What else y'all got? I'm gonna hang out. Hey, got nine. We got, we got nine minutes. We got nine minutes. Hey, did everybody see that article about that one nurse who stole like 600 drugs and the cops picked her up? Anybody see all that? I'm trying to tell you y'all gotta be a, hey, y'all gotta, first of all, don't be doing shit like that. That's number one, because eventually you will get caught. Don't, don't be doing shit like that. Like, Ever since COVID, you know, nurses went from being up here to being down here. We're terrible people to being back up here to now seeing all these articles that are it's just nonsense. Right. So don't be don't be don't be that person. You worked very, very hard and spent a lot of money. And more importantly, you spent a fuck ton of time getting your license, getting your degree. Don't piss it away by doing stupid shit. I'm just being all the way honest. Also, y'all see that NSYNC is about. <sighs> Yo, we want to Hey, they going on tour, y'all. We know what's happening. We know what's happening. NCLEX, NCLEX a joke? I don't know. You want me to tell you an NCLEX joke? You want me to tell you an NCLEX joke, Tyler? I don't know. I don't know what you want from me, sir. I don't know what you want from me. Right? Hey, I'm just saying, we all going to a concert? NSYNC, it's happening. Get, get our dance moves on and everything.
What else y'all got? Oh, I, I think I think y'all are all questioned out for the night, which is cool. They back? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they back. <laughs> and you already know what's finna happen. Not me about to go buy a Justin Timberlake shirt. Don't judge me, okay? I see all the judgment. I see it. I see it coming. Don't do it. Don't do it, okay? Uh, NCLEX suggestions. I don't even... I need for you to give me a little bit more context than that. Like, what, what do you mean, NCLEX suggestions? Is that no, no, Nia? No judgment? Good. Good. Whew. I was worried about that for a second. I was worried about it. <laughs> uh, it's gonna... Yeah, it is. it's, it's gonna be May for the next year. Yep. Don't nobody care about Taylor Swift. Don't nobody even care about Beyonce. Yeah, I said it. It is all about... The NSYNC boys. Uh, is it possible to work full time and attend an accelerated program? Absolutely. I was, whoa, I was um, active duty while I was in nursing school. So I worked full time and I was in an accelerated BSN program and it was 18 months. So, yes, you 100 percent can do uh, work full time. But that is all is that Christian. That's all going to come. That's all going to have to go come from you. All of it. You're going to have to literally rearrange your entire life. Remember, that's temporary, though. It's temporary. Rearrange your life temporarily so you can set yourself up permanently. Uh, I'm a Swifty. Help. I'm a. Uh, you're a Swifty. Oh God, here we go. Hey Kate, you can keep her. I'm, I honestly, I never was a really big T Swift fan. I ain't gonna lie to you. I had a dude that I used to work with. He was in love with her, and I'm just like, why? I don't know. She seems like a very nice person, I guess. And I think she's dating Travis Kelsey. The only reason I know that is because it pops up all over TikTok. Like I care. I follow Travis Kelsey. Ah. <laughs> How often do you do your lives? I do my lives Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 5.30 Central Standard Time. Do you re uh, What do you recommend to study for NCLEX specifically for the, uh, for the next gen? So a lot of the reviews out right now have, have uh, updated their stuff with the new generation NCLEX. Uh, stuff um, that actually happened, what, in April. So, you know, some people are still playing catch up to include myself. So the one thing that I would, uh, and I'll, honestly, first of all, you got to, you got to think about it's Christian, oh, just like Christian. Okay. Got you. So you got to think about what type of learner that you are. You got to think about what you need. So they have reviews like what Archer, U World, Kaplan, Hearst, Mark Klimek, mine, the seven day NCLEX course, whoop, whoop. link is in the bio. Um, You got freaking, what else? You got uh, Archer, U World. You got Saunders books. You got Lippincott. You got um, what else? What else? Those are the ones. Those are the ones that are like right off the top of my head that I could think of. So uh, she is awesome. She donated a hundred. She donated a hundred k to her truck driver on her tour of her own money. She better. Why wouldn't she? Archer or U World? It depends. It depends on you. I like Archer. Because for, for me, it's a, it, for me and for most people, it's a little bit cheaper. Uh, Remar is good. Remar nursing or Archer. It all just depends on you. I like I like Archer, although I think Remar, I think Regina stuff is really good, too. Uh, but if I chose between Archer or UWorld, I would choose Archer. That's just me, though. I've known, like I said, I've known people that I use UWorld and I fail. I use UWorld twice and I fail. I use Archer. I didn't use Archer at that point. I'm sorry. But Archer, I wish I would have known about them before. Right. Remar, I kind of played around with her stuff, but it just really wasn't for me. Uh, I saw somebody else say something in here. Um, you were. Um, you wanna, um, somebody should host a, bun uh, a brunch for nurses. Look, I, maybe one day this is weird. I'm like, man, maybe one day I should just do a live where I go to a brunch. I'm like, hey, we're just going to do a uh, we're going to do a, a, a brunch and live. Like, where y'all at? Where y'all at? I got this mimosa at seven o'clock in the morning. No, I don't got a drinking problem. You got a drinking problem. Uh, but she didn't have to. Yeah, of course she didn't have to, Kate. Stop. Hey, look, don't do that. Don't do that. OK, don't be out here. T don't be out here. Don't be out here trying to be, be a, a T-Swift advocate. OK, you're right. She ain't have to do that. So uh, how did you utilize Archer productively? So I you I used Archer. I didn't use Archer for NCLEX. I didn't even know about Archer until after I had passed my NCLEX. However, what I did do is when I was coaching students who had already bought Archer, I essentially went to Archer's stuff and I was just like, all right, cool. Let's go. Let's go through the questions that you've already answered so you can understand these. But it doesn't matter if it's Archer. It doesn't matter what the review is, because all of the study stuff can be the same. 
You need to put yourself on a schedule, time management. You need to create a study plan for yourself, such as what is the hardest section for you to study? You know, for me, it was farm and then it was maternity. So I put on a calendar. I'm going to study farm content and then I'm going to and then I'm going to do my questions, my answers, and I'm going to read and review. And then the next day I was going to go and go through all the pharmacology. I was going to go through all the pharmacology all the time. And then when I do my quizzes, they were all going to be random. Hey, when you do your quizzes and you're studying, they always need to be random. Why? Because your NCLEX is random. Your NCLEX is never going to be like, yeah, let's just stick with cardiology. I think that's what Brandon likes. Nah, it's not going to happen, bro. You know, you know, you know, it's not going to happen. Is ATS still a thing? Very much so. Very much, Tyler. Very much still a thing. Um, but it doesn't like it doesn't matter what program you have. That's how you utilize it. You know, content, questions, review. Repeat. That's exactly how you do it. Uh, I need to make a study plan for myself. Jessica, content, questions, review, repeat. Uh, a sen- uh, Andrew, senior in high school, planning to go to BSN program in California. Do you think it's possible if I'm not book smart? Andrew, so you highly recommend Archer? I just said I recommend Archer. Uh, Andrew, I'm going to tell you, I've met some stupid ass nurses. Trust me when I tell you that. It has nothing to do about. Yeah, you got to know the yeah, you have to know the knowledge. You have to get the knowledge down. So here's the thing. You don't have to be necessarily book smart because maybe reading a book is not how you acquire knowledge and not how it sinks in. You got to think of alternative ways that you learn. Right. So is it visual? Is it auditory? Is it kinesthetic? You know, you don't necessarily have to be book smart. I'm not the smartest person in a book either. But when I look at the material and I apply it based off of what I read or what I've seen in the video, that's how I'm able to retain it. So you got to think about those alternative ways. And it doesn't matter if you're book smart. Trust me. I know a dude who's so damn smart, but he is not a doctor. And I'm talking about like he knows he reads books all the time and very knowledgeable in the book. But it's nowhere near of being a doctor. I'm like, why aren't you a doctor? He's like, no, that's stupid. You you sure about that? You you sure? You sure? You sure about that? You see what I'm saying? I'm a nervous wreck. I have my farm final. uh, Any last minute advice? Uh, if you, as long as you know your family name and your suffixes, this is for, is it Carrie or Kari? As long as you know your family name, your suffixes, your signs and symptoms of those medications, that's the biggest portion of it, right? So I'll always revert to this example. Let's go to cardiac meds. Cool. What falls under our cardiac meds? ARBs, ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, diuretics, uh, digoxin, right? So, okay, now I, let's go to like, okay, now let's go to beta blockers, all beta blockers in an LOL and all LOLs are beta blockers, right? Now, what are the, now, what does that medication do? Does it lower my blood pressure? Does it make it go up? Right. You know, and I, now that I know about that, now I'm thinking about what about my vital signs? What do I check? Right? Like, what do I check to make sure that my patient is good to go? Right. Um, I got to think about orthostatic hypotension. Uh, what of my potassium going to look like? Is it a K with, uh, you know, is it going to make my potassium go up? You know, what, is, what drugs does that deal with? You know, like, um, and then it all goes back to nursing safety. Best advice for taking the T's, um, study for it, Christian. Um, I, my best advice is getting that, uh, Mometrics book off of Amazon. It's like 33 bucks. Get it off Amazon, study it for a month. Gucci. Good to go. Um, Kari, you are very welcome. All right. I'll answer uh, a few more questions and then I'm going to get off. If you guys don't have any other questions, I appreciate everybody coming to the live and it like, this was the best live I think I've had. I had a thousand people in here watching me at once, 429 shares, 41,000 likes. Y'all are fucking, fucking killing it out here for me. Y'all are killing out here for me because I love to do this for y'all. I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. So make sure you guys go over to all those other spots and follow me. Mark Clement is great. Um, make sure you guys check out the seven day NCLEX course. Um, that's for four right now. It's forty eight dollars. And once a hey, once I'm out of the pre launch phase, it's not going to be forty eight dollars. I'm telling you all that right now. So we're adding new generation NCLEX stuff as well as the NCLEX review for the eight sections of the NCLEX pie. Gucci out here. Um, and also, hey, remember, hey, hey, hey it's, it, it's free to be kind out here. It's free to be nice, all right? But also be nice to yourself. Be nice and be kind to yourself, okay? And that's my last spiel on my fucking Mr. Rogers shit, apparently. So that's what somebody said last time. 
Um, so uh, thank you. I'm a visual learner. I'm pretty shy. So do you have any tips on uh, being shy in nursing? Andrew, I'm going to tell you right now, you need to you have to get you have to pull yourself from out of that corner. You have to pull yourself out of that corner. If you were one of my students, whoops, if you were one of my students and you were hiding in the corner, I would force you to come up there. I would be like, come here. I like since you want to hide in the corner. Now I'm about to make you work. The faster that you can get over that anxiety of being scared, you know, the better, the, the, the better that you'll be, especially if you're trying to, because you have to interact with patients. So the faster that you get to the, the faster that you get to that point, the better that you'll be advice for retaking NCLEX PN after graduating and failing NCLEX three times, 15 years ago. Um, study for it. This is for KY boy, mom study for it. Um, you failed it three times. I failed it three times and I passed on the fourth. I failed it three times and I passed on the fourth. No one cares. No one. Trust me when I tell you. And this is just nothing but tough love. No one gives a shit that you failed your exam three times. So you failed it 15 years ago. You're going to. And so and you let and you at that point in time, you let it beat you or you had some other things that were going on in life. And that's and that's fair. One thing I want to say to you is. You need to you need to pick you got you got to pick yourself up. Literally, I just heard a code blue sound and it was me. <laughs> I was it was one of the videos I posted earlier. So um, Hearst review Hearst. So Hearst review is cool. Hearst review is cool. Um, I It was an environmental block for me because she has such a thick country accent and I really couldn't pay attention. Um, but, you know, you got Hearst, Kaplan, U World, uh, Archer, Mark Klimek, uh Remar. All different types out there, including mine. Seven day NCLEX course. Check it out in the bio. Um, and it all just depends on when you want to take your exam. So um, it's not just about the review. The review is part of it, but the majority of it is you. That's the majority of it. The majority of it is you. What's your time management look like? Can you recreate the testing center? Right. Like, can you eliminate distractions? Uh, are you studying content properly? Are you doing your questions and answers? Are you reading and reviewing them and retaining the information of the ones that you got right, but especially with the ones that you got wrong. You know what I mean? So that one would be for you, ma'am. But anyways, that is it on the questions, y'all. I appreciate everybody for coming by. We're going to be doing this same time, same channel uh, on Friday at 530 Central Standard Time. So like I said, be nice, be kind to yourself, be great. And I will see everyone on whatever day I just said, Friday. So see you later. Bye.